All right, and we are live with the 21st episode of the Game Session Podcast. I'm your host, Jose, slash Seth Rokage. This week, I am joined by Sarah, Corey, and Blaine, as well as the ghost of Mesa, who may be joining us uh, at a later point within. I hope how's, so. How's everyone doing this week? Hello. I'm doing all right. Doing pretty good. You know, just another Same week. You're doing pretty good. Yeah. At the uh, top of the show, we felt it might be best to go ahead and uh, at least mention um, something that occurred today, or at least came to light today. Uh, Blaine, would you care to um, elaborate on that? Yes. Um, the We have found out some things that one of the members of Game Grumps may or may not be a predator of, of his fans. Um, regardless of what you think about someone's age, whether it's okay or not, the fact of the matter is, it is not okay to um, to be to be blunt. Fuck your groupies. It's not okay in any sense, whether they're eighteen, whether they're seventeen, whether they're twenty-two, whether they're thirty. It, it's just it is an impa- it is an imbalance of power that will never ever be not predatory on some level, whether you intend it to be or not, or unfair. Maybe unfair is a better term than predatory because it's not always. But either way. Um, and I think we, I speak for all of us at, uh, I think I speak for all of us at the game session when I say that we support the victims and those who have come forward with this information. And until something really shows a different, shows that that is possibly not true, we're going to continue to stand with those people. Um, that being said, I also do just want to bring up that I think we all stand with, with that. Sorry, a little woof here. Um, we all stand with the the eight women that were sadly killed by an, uh, an act of racist hate and aggression. Um, the cat just meowed. <laughs> um, uh, if you haven't been following uh, things, you know this this is a thing that happened. I believe there were ten people that were killed total, but there were, it was a specifically racially motivated attack, and. Um, you can look up more information. Uh, we need to we, we need to stop Asian hate in general and uh, Pacific Islander hate, and it a lot of it comes to the fact of what was spread during the 2020 election and the issues going on with COVID. That being said, uh, Jose, do you want to get us into the show? Um, yes. So just at the top of the show, I want to go to remind everyone to. Um, well, first I also want to thank you, Blaine, for. That that feels like you were reading off like notes, but I know you weren't. You're just that eloquent with your thoughts, very well organized. So mm-hmm. thank you for that. Um, but yeah, at the top of the show, I just want to go and remind everyone to like, comment, subscribe on everyone's socials. Everyone's um, socials are on screen. It's also going to be the descriptions. Corey has a new at as well as username, I believe, on Twitch and everything also. So that's uh, now at King Corey Bear. That's not at Celtic Scribe. OK. Uh, I don't even does that still direct you there by any chance? Yeah, it does. Uh, I made sure to go in and um, uh, oh, uh, the link in the chat or what are you talking about? Oh no, does your oh. old does like your oh. old uh, at still like direct to your new one or? Oh yeah, yeah. So no, no, no. So uh, Celtic Scribe, okay, that's no more. Um, pretty much all of my links are now under King Cory Bear. So all right, awesome. Um, Game Session Podcast is filmed live at 6.30 p.m. PST on Sunday, so you can later find it on podcast services as well as on... Messed up my words. Um, English is hard. It's a bad language. Uh, You can find it later on uh, podcast services as well as on YouTube as both uh, full episodes and individual cut-up segments. Um, Yeah, I think that's going to do it about for that. So let's go ahead and pull a 180 tonal shift. Uh, originally, we were going to have Mesa go ahead and take it away with the Evo news because he's by far the most educated and educated on everything and anything uh, fighting games, especially some of the bigger machinations at play. Uh, instead, Blaine, what are your thoughts on Prey 2006 and Prey 2017? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to let them think that you sprung this on me because you did specifically say, hey, so we're talking about this and rehashing this argument again, right? Yeah. On Sunday. But, um, okay, so um, I'm going to educate the, the viewers and listeners for a second. So uh, I brought this up in, I believe, the SDGC Discord and on Twitter. And um, Jose and I kind of 
not fundamentally disagree. We agree on pretty much everything. It's like we usually do in these situations, but we disagree on one specific facet of the argument. <laughs> um, I personally believe that Prey 2017, while a very strong game, I think ultimately fails to reach any potential it could have because of the fact of the, of the fact that it has to live in the shadow of Prey 2006. That because of the fact that it's going to be compared to that, that you essentially have what was a very, in, not a, a, a basic, a, not a basic narrative, a, 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 it was an interesting narrative that was kind of a basic action game, but with very good mechanics and also had a story that revolved around a Native American main character and his ethnicity, Tommy, was was woven into like the very foundation of what made that a narrative interesting. It wasn't just like, well, he happens to be Native American. In Prey 2017, um, the ethnicity of Morgan Yu and his brother, whose name I forget, um, were Alex, I believe. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, Morgan and Alex's ethnicity, while um, we're never really we're never really brought up as anything other than kind of like, well, yeah, they just happen to be Asian. There's some design aesthetics. Like I think for Alex's uh, home in the space station and just maybe a note here or there and not saying that you have to, you know, do the whole, like, well, you have to make every single thing reflective of a character's ethnicity, but you know, it, it makes me think of almost like what if in Wolfenstein, the new order, I mean, sorry, the new Colossus, instead of having like, you find out BJ is Jewish via like all of these story elements linking back to his mother and his father his mother being ethnically jewish and his father being like a really abusive christian and white nationalist like imagine if that didn't exist and you just had kind of a note somewhere being like oh yeah remember bj's bar mitzvah and then that was it and it was never addressed ever again um that's more or less how i feel about that and i feel like once you strip that away and once you don't have you, you once you strip all that away pray 2017 Sorry if I'm rambling here, but Pre 2017 is essentially your very bog standard kind of system shock slash Bioshock kind of clone. Maybe even a little bit of Deus Ex in there. And even like elements like how Pre 2006 had like these all these weird weapons that maybe you wouldn't use every single one, but every one felt memorable in different ways. Like the fucking acid gun, which is like basically a shotgun, but not your like weird assault rifle that could turn into a sniper rifle with a like a a sticky thing that would pop out of the gun and suction onto your character's eye. Um, I I don't remember a lot of weapons like that aside from like the glue gun, which was cool, and you could get like powers. Mm-hmm. Um, now Jose thinks that it's unfair that I make those comparisons. I I, 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 I say why. I would like to go maybe just point by point, not necessarily be like, oh well, my opinions right or whatever, just. More so, Hot take. Uh, I agree. I agree with a uh, with a uh, with a uh, Blaine on, on on all this. So sorry, sorry, my dude. Gonna have to. <laughs> oh no! I, oh no! That's the thing. Me and Blaine fundamentally agree on a well, lot no. of this. So really quick, Blaine and I spoke about this. I, the only reason I was excited for Prey 2017 was because I was fully under the impression that it was a spiritual successor to the original Prey. Because I have, I have some odd memories of like playing the original Prey when I was incredibly too young. Because it was like that one Xbox 360 game that my that my babysitter's brother had that I would just play all the time because I fell in love with it and I still love Prey. So I was fully under the impression that this new one was a spirit sourcing six six successor because it had the same name. And when I played it, it wasn't that. And I got bored very, very quickly. <laughs> So I, I still kind of just want to go by it point by point uh, just to keep it a little bit more organized. Uh, I'm in absolute agreement that having the stronger emphasis on the characters of ethnicity, especially since especially in 2006, there wasn't much um, representation for Native American characters. And um, so I, for the record, I have not played Prey 2006. I, I believe that's the year it came out. So I can't really speak on the gameplay from there. I've kind of listened to what people have thought uh, here and there. But um, sure, so yeah, I, I have sure, nothing to say on that front for the original. Like three dollars. <laughs> yeah, I just want to turn my Xbox on. Give me, give me one moment. Um, but but as far as 2017, uh, price 2017, I would disagree with the assertion that it's just kind of a. I am. You, you didn't go with the assertion that it's just basically a full on like 
a generic shooter but i think like it goes even beyond like what deus ex is saying so i would say in that regard it's a far more it's a far smarter game than the original and that the way that there's so many variables and options that you can explore the world and accomplish objectives it is by far one of the best immersive sims out in the market and that's just kind of what arcane excels at so on a pure like gameplay front um it, it absolutely stands out in its own regard um as for the name i do have a couple quotes from interviews from before the game did come out um that basically just and i think there's probably going to be like the central disagreement and it might even be like a semantical difference uh but in the interviews i i have like a big old paragraph here but it basically distills to we had the name it sounded cool they both have aliens in common but aside from that these are fundamentally not the same game it's just we like the name so we're going to reuse it so like i so as, as i said i hadn't played the original when it came out so i so i, I knew about like kind of like the story the background the, the whole native american aspect but I, I never had like any illusion that it was going to tie in. Like I knew very, well, not even I, I was very aware of the fact. In. Just the fact that like, I, I, like I know they're saying, well, it just has the same name and they both have aliens, but otherwise, you know, we just had the, we had access to the name. So we wanted to do that. But the thing is, it's one thing if like, it, it's one thing when like how, for instance, there's like five different horror movies all with the name house. If you count also, because like, you could say house or hausu, whatever, but like there's that one, the Japanese one that everyone pretty much knows about. There's one that I've seen that has like three sequels that I've never watched. I mean, I've seen it like around. Um, there's one, I think, literally just called House that it's like a weird, mind bendy Michael Madsen horror movie. And this isn't, I feel like you, this isn't like a situation where that, where it's like these are all different people over different spans of time that all just kind of used a very generic name for their thing and didn't have any connection. If I remember correctly, uh, Zenimax and then so on and so forth, Bethesda owns the rights to Prey the series. They have since, I guess, what, since they bought out id however many years ago or whatever? Because it was id and 3D Realms that originally owned mm -hmm. Prey, if I remember correctly. Um, and so, yeah, like, this is you own the property, you own the IP, you make a new game with that as your title. Not even, like, and, and, and no matter how much you want to say well yeah that's the only connection and we just thought the name was cool it's like but so then come up with a different name because if yeah. it didn't have that name i wouldn't be this hard on it i wouldn't even be harping on the whole like why aren't you doing more with the character's ethnicity because i'd be like at least there's the interesting kind of like the psychological test thing going on i, I think that's which, the point of disagreement for me at least though in that like well, yes like, I, I fundamentally agree using that same name is creating that little bit of confusion but i feel like once you get past the the tiny little i wouldn't even necessarily call it a hurdle that it's not fundamentally the same thing i feel like it's not necessarily fair to hold that against what is ostens ostensibly a completely separate project haven't they also said in interviews that that they that they somehow wanted to do the original prey justice or something that was like, in, like, that oh, was in the early to... talks i have i have some like, interview uh, here people seem seem to regret that prey was going like prey 2006 was supposed to get a sequel like it was supposed to legitimately follow what happened in the original and while focused on its on, on a different character tommy was still in it and still played a very important that was role canceled long before the uh 2017 started Even development still, there was a sequel happening that still had the main character of the first game in it, still in a super important role, and he still had all of his abilities from Prey 1. It was 85% done. Like, you can still go on Steam and see the achievements for it. Like, it was very close to being done. And then they cancel it, then make something completely different that has nothing to do with, with, with the original property. Just go, oh, we like this name. Our company owns this name. We'll just use this name instead of like attempting to bring back what they had to drop and and especially for for me when i heard that there was a new game called prey coming out that had aliens in it that took place on a spaceship i instantly thought that it was really or not just related but like a spiritual successor to the original prey and it's like i get that not many people also thought that but the chance that it wasn't just me who thought that was just like why would you make something completely totally out of left field that's not that but then you name it after something that's was totally fine and great on its on its own and just go oh we just like the name so we just yoinked it <laughs> i actually have a 
uh, or actually, to one of the things you brought up, uh, Jose. Uh, if you want to give that, and then I kind of want to defer to Corey since he seems impartial to it so far. Oh, or sorry. <laughs> Uh, for those Corey's listening and not like, watching, Corey is raising his hands <laughs> in, I don't know, I guess. Um, I love you, Corey. Um, it, to, specifically to your thing of, um, well, I think once you get over that, even not, might not call it a hurdle, that step, you, there's a really nice immersive sim underneath. I would agree with you when I first played it. Um, but after like i mean i since i played it and put it down for the first time and i was like oh this is like one of the coolest most like, most in, uh, immersive things ever like you said like oh the whole thing is basically a psychological test they do the whole we lay it out in front of you in that questionnaire in the beginning of the game and then all of your actions are more or less parallel to those like i dig stuff like that in games the fact that it's um the fact that it's it, 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 it's it's ending isn't so much that it changes depending on your choices but like the character you are is changed by your choices and the kind of morgan you that you play as um i dig that kind of thing in games even if it doesn't necessarily change the ending um can i make a quick little posit i wasn't yeah. necessarily invested in the story of prey 2017 for me it mostly I want to say like 95% comes down to the overall game design. I think it's one of the best design games like the last, I don't even want to say 10 years. It's one of the best design games, period. Oh, okay. Because I was literally just going to be like, all that novel wears off really fast. And I never felt a desire to go back to it after that. Um, I will agree with that. Like the game itself is very well made. When I say it's a, when I say it's a pretty bog standard System Shock, Bioshock-esque, like Deus Ex-esque kind of thing, I don't mean that necessarily as a complete insult. I just mean like you can see kind of where they got their inspirations, but it does play well. I had fun playing, figured it out. I didn't mind the fact that it felt weighty at all. Mm -hmm. I actually kind of dug that. I know we were um, talking before the show about, um, I think we were talking about the System Shock 2 remake about how it, um, or maybe it's the original oh, we were talking about, yeah. where it just doesn't control well with the controller. I would say maybe even Prey mm -hmm. tw 2017 is one of those, where it just plays substantially better with the mouse. I well, the that, only the, the only differences when System Shock 2 came out, it was 1999. I think the only like uh, controller controls have ever been modded in. There was never them to begin with. They just always were like, oh, people are going to play with the keyboard and the mouse, and that's it. Mm -hmm. I think I think who was it in the SDG Discord? I think it was Betameister, um, saying about it was like maybe like their second or third playthrough. And I I do think it's one of those games that substantially gets better each time you play it if you decide to spec in different ways because there's so many different options and routes mm -hmm. that you might not have even noticed before. Um, I think that's just another circular way to, for me to say like I I think it's, I just think it's very well designed. And from what I've seen and what from I've heard from podcasts, I just finished listening to a um the Ken and Rince podcast. It's kind of like a game club. They all play the game. They talk about it where Prey 2006 was kind of just more of like, I don't, I don't want to like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't want to say like, it's just like a shooter of that era, but like in it's comparison, it basically shooter. is. Yes, it's a straightforward shooter. The gameplay is not anything besides the fact that all the weapons were very interesting, like as designs, there wasn't much to write home about the main the main strength of that story of that game was its story with tommy the narrative and um apparently a lot of vagina doors or something that sounds about right oh god you just that reminded me is wild <laughs> oh no that, that was a big talking point of the podcast i was listening the whole to game takes place <laughs> on this weird remember. orbiting like gross organic ship yeah uh, i don't want to say it's giger-esque specifically but it is definitely like no it's more just level. like fleshy it's more just yeah. like fleshy. it's like it's cronenbergian it's that whole bioorganics mm -hmm. about biomechanics shit and um, it's and it's a super like it's it's a super alien abduction from the sky story yeah it's like you literally get like sucked up out of out of a bar at at the beginning like alien ab abduction style right after okay. you be two white nationalist rednecks to yes. death. Um, I yeah. guess at this point, I kind of want to defer to Corey. What do you, you think overall about this? Uh, about the Prey series? I, I guess kind of like some the disagreement, I guess, like, and at least in terms of like Prey 2017 using the same name despite not having to do anything with it. I'm literally with impartial to all of this because I've never played either of those. But you're the king. You have to. You have to make some kind of arbitrary decision to make one group feel better than the other. 
My decision is to not make a decision. Fucking liberal. <laughs> <laughs> Can Sarah um, win? Yeah, I think that's about Yay! all I really have to say on it. Uh, I I should I should probably go. I don't hate Prey twenty twenty seventeen. It had a lot of really fun things going for it when I and played it. Do I. Keep keep in mind when I played it, it was when it was ridiculously hard. Even like it when when I played it, it didn't have an easy. It literally got an easy mode like a year in via via in an update. Oh, because you know what? So many I... people come come complained, and they're like, "Okay, we'll put it because 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 I think it only had like normal and hard. It didn't have an easy, so I struggled a bit through it because I'm just not good at video games. I, I can definitely see that because like the I want to say like even like maybe like the first five to like maybe even ten hours, it totally plays like a survival horror game. It does. Until you start giving yourself more health, you can yeah. start increasing your gun damage. Mm-hmm. You're just running around with psychic powers, shotgunning everything in the face. It's totally yeah. fucking yeah. So and like, like I guess first, like, five oh, or so sorry, hours. Sorry. Are, no, no, sorry. It's that was my only complaint about it. I think I got around halfway through. I stopped playing when when you were in the like crew quarters. Because they introduced this invisible enemy that was utter bullshit that I was so pissed at that you needed like a neural mod to see it. And I was just like, what the fuck? Like, you just got to swing your wrench like a mad person. It, and it literally just like annoyed the shit out of me. So like I stopped playing. I've been meaning to give it a second chance because it was just added to Game Pass like about a week ago. And it has the easy mode update in it. So I've been meaning to play it again. Because also that game's aesthetic just kind of slaps too. Like, oh, yeah. It, like it's like a system shock and bioshock aesthetic and the to me it's sort of like the most wearing your wearing your inspiration on your sleeve but not in a douchey way. It's mm. like oh making it still your own thing. Cuz like the, the one thing I inspiration is very yeah, nice and like the, the one thing uh, I remember uh, residential areas. Yeah, the one thing I remember playing that game was stepping into the open lobby the first time and just being like, holy shit, this looks cool. Because you have the Art Deco on your left and you have all of space on your right. <laughs> and, it mm-hmm. just, and, it, and, it, and it just was like really cool and that stood out to me. Also, the neural mods having to stab your eye. Please don't ever do that. <laughs> Please don't poke your <laughs> eyes. I do want to be it. clear, I'm not too. a fan of it. I'm not telling anyone, like, you know, oh, fuck you if you like this game. That's never my goal with these kinds of things. Um, oh, yeah. Me, 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 neither. I'm I never going to be that person. <laughs> I'm just that person that, like, when I hear someone be like, oh, my God, it's, like, one of the best games ever made. It's, like, one of those brilliant fucking things. I'm just like, I'm glad you like it that much. I think it's kind of, eh. I played some better games, in my opinion, but, you know, whatever. To be fair to to that, uh, I, I, I'm sorry, to be fair to your points, um, it is absolutely one of those games where I, I think a f- decent amount of people bounce off because it just doesn't click like it's a little I don't want to say obtuse, but its systems don't necessarily click right away. Like, I, I think mm-hmm. I bounced off like the first it was it's like the first or second time I, I tried getting into it, I just bounced off before it like it made sense. See, the funny thing for me is I didn't bounce off because like I was actually going to either like I have my PS4 copy or I was going to download the Game Pass version and I just to like play a little bit and refresh my memory see if you know like I still felt the same way and I I just could not be bothered to even like make the effort to press download so that was just like I guess that's my answer as far as how I still feel about that game. Let's talk about some really shitty news. Oh, like really let's this is not fun oh, news. No. <laughs> oh no. Uh Bobby Kotick, the infamously overpaid CEO of Activision Blizzard, is set to receive a record high $200 million bonus in addition to his usual eight figure annual salary. Corey just walked away in disgust, and I agree with him. So, despite Activision. Corey walked away into the blinding light to leave. Uh, he's going out to look up across, <laughs> across the veranda and just see what the no now he's walking and into scream the, and scream no, 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 no. he's going to scream he's got a package or something no, um, d- despite okay. activision blizzard's booming Sunday? business during the pandemic the company hasn't supplied a reciprocated amount of raises or increased resources to its employees uh, who have since begun sharing information about their wages internally in protest of kotex actions tell them what um, they did get though jose oh god yeah <laughs> Uh, undeterred from his goal of corporate greed, Kotick is continuing his trend of mass layoffs with a recent wave leaving nearly 200 employees jobless. 
Uh, while the newly laid off workers are set to receive health care benefits throughout the remainder of the year, they're also insultingly getting $200 of store credit to Battle.net, uh, Activision Blizzard's PC digital game storefront. And um, I, I want to credit... I want to credit this tweet to uh, Dan Price, the CEO of, uh, I believe it's Gravity Payments. Uh, to place this in a perspective, Bobby Kodak could have given a, he could have given one million dollars to every single one of those employees, Jeez, and still have, and still have given himself ten million dollars. Instead, he fired nearly two hundred people and took all the money for himself. Yep. Daddy it, Kodak needs a fucking new yacht. I keep saying it, and, and I keep having to say it. It's not a joke. How much, uh, uh, it, you know, obviously, you know, a private jet costs a lot of money, Jose. How else is he supposed to keep up with the bills? Like, How much on. money does a fucking why, person why, need? Like some oh. fucking scumbag? <laughs> like, really, how, how much, how much fucking those? money does someone need? Holy shit. How does he keep getting away with this? Um, apparently the board is actually pretty pissed at him. Um, I have a quote right here. Uh, Michael Varner, a member of the Union of the Union Pension Fund Advocacy, Ad, yeah, Advocacy Organization, uh, CTW Investment Group, issued a statement proclaiming that while the increase in Activision stock price is somewhat commendable, as we stated last year and continue to assert, this achievement alone does not justify such a substantial pay outcome for the CEO. So people are pissed at him like internally that he's been getting away with this for a long time. Um, some kind of like clause within his contract or whatever, but it's. Also, the uh, how are you going to lay off two hundred people in the middle of a fucking pandemic and pocket all that for yourself? And I'll I'll say this, Jose. This is this is the sa- this is the reason. As old as time, ever since there's been financial classes in any society, the reason that rich people like that do not do that is because they say their excuse is that poor people will get lazy if suddenly they come into money and they won't want to work anymore. Period. Well, uh, you see, Corey, he uh, pulled yeah. himself up by his bootstraps. That's what a uh, Judeo-Christian man does. Right. So uh, it's I'm like, sorry, oh, wait, what? You mean... <laughs> that's, that's what our boy Benjamin would say. My God. I, I don't even know what you're talking about. Are you okay? Whole, I watch whole, too much YouTube. The whole <laughs> argument that if people come into money or if people get paid better or if they have benefits that are, you know, like free healthcare and all this stuff, that they're going to get suddenly lazy is such absolute horseshit. Isn't that regular? And when I say regularly, regularly, I mean, like, isn't that proven wrong almost at least multiple times a decade in somewhere in e- either in the united states and because i know recently when before this was even brought up like one of these studies was shown like you know we they just gave people during the pandemic like an extra i think it was like five thousand dollars or something they, they gave them a, a monthly stipend and the, the what was shown is they were actually like able to improve their lives and further um be more productive and whether it was working from home whether it was getting a new job or whatever like it actually helped people be more productive not Mm -hmm. that productivity should be what we what we aim to just get out of people as a society but it still says a lot when the when the argument is usually the one you say Corey. when let's be real the lazy ones are usually these billionaires and billionaires and millionaires at the top who cut all these corners to make as much money as possible while screwing everyone beneath them actually carrying them yeah exactly and like for instance you see this you see this in elderly people too who who retire um they come out of retirement a lot of elderly people who are still able-bodied they they some of them come out of retirement momentarily because they're bored out of their mind because they literally don't know what to do so it's just like the human body and the human condition was meant to be active we were meant to be doing things so being lazy is only so bearable for so long and i agree with you blaine these people these ceos that are doing just like this guy did um cutting corners to make as much money as they possibly can they're the ones that are being absolutely lazy in everything that they they can do and they're also they're the ones that are benefiting from handouts at constantly mm-hmm. from the government and benefiting from socialism when you don't have to pay your taxes because of <laughs> loopholes Again, I know this was, I think this was predominantly EA that had the big, like, they haven't been paying taxes and whatever, unless it was Activision. I'm just sure neither one of them pay their taxes. It's probably anyway. both. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
you know, I'm talking about the basement in fucking Europe or whatever, but like something else that actually adds to that, to add to your point, Corey, of like, you know, when you have nothing to do, you kind of go crazy. Like, remember when Notorious Shithead Notch sold Minecraft for like a whatever billion million dollars and bought his weird, <laughs> stupid fucking mansion and realized he has no fucking friends. So he just would start like tweeting like, number one, he start leaning, leaning, started leaning even harder into white nationalism than he already did. But the quote unquote allegedly, not really. But like, then he also like talked to. You remember they made that tweet of like all oh, the M and M's and my big candy wall went bad because I had no friends to come over to eat them. And just thinking about how all that man has is a big man, big empty mansion with nobody in it but him and his own stupid bullshit. Mm-hmm. And that's Bobby get... Kodak. That's all these people. My my really quick. I don't know anything. There's a reason I went to film school and not didn't study business. But if, if there's enough people on the board who are pissed at what he's doing, can't they do something? Apparently he has some clause in his contract. They're, they're willing oh. to keep him on. What is that? Uh, I, don't, I, I don't know business jargon. What does that mean? He has something very specific in his contract that's allowing him to get like this inordinate amount of money that maybe if another CEO was in there that they wouldn't be getting that same thing. It's something that he probably negotiated when he took the position and they didn't think he'd be able to, I don't even want to say it is like, he'd be able to do it. Like he fucking achieved something and, aside from firing people. And let's be honest. The, the only way, the only reason he was able, he was even able to discover such a clause or to negotiate that is probably because he could afford a lawyer who uh, in turn had their own agenda because lawyers, if they, if they, you know, win the cases of these multi-million, multi-billion dollar CEOs, then guess what? They get a big payday too. So it all comes full circle. Yeah, I just um, feel I, stupid asking. I just don't know business stuff. I, I don't want to get yeah. to uh, Comrade Jose <laughs> over here, but uh, this is a damn good reason why unions need to be mandated in the mm. games industry. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't be able to get away with this stupid ass shit just so you can afford fucking 50 extra yachts. But Jose, my yacht got dirty and I need a new one. Oh, I, no. uh, <laughs> I, uh, I, uh, I, uh, accidentally like, scuffed another yacht. Now I need three. Just yeah. so if I scuff one, I'm I got a speck own. of dust on my phone. I need to buy a new one. <laughs> it's an iPhone, Jose. What would it cost? Five dollars? <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think about that fucking Ricky Gervais fucking stand-up thing where uh, he, he's like joking that that rich people are like so fucking disconnected from reality that when someone asks him if he can, they can borrow money for milk, he just hands them like 200. He's like, that should cover it, right? Yeah. <laughs> self self depreciative humor doesn't work when you're also an insufferable jackass, though. <laughs> Yeah, that, mother I'll, I'll give you that, that motherfucker didn't he? It wasn't he built a career off that. I know, but like he then just got worse <laughs> and worse as time went on. Like he became Michael Scott essentially, but I mean, quote unquote, more intelligent. I mean, he's not like fucking what's the dude's name, Bill Burr or whatever. He's not like a jackass socially, almost, if that makes I sense. I would almost argue he's worse than Bill Burr because at least Bill Burr has like either admitted he's wrong. I mean, I'm not going to defend him for the Gina Carano shit. He can go fuck himself. But what I'm saying is like. At least for the fact that I've seen him either admit he's wrong, or I've never seen him say shit that's like, up until recently, was shit like, um... Also, was that Michael Scott reference triggered. intentional? <laughs> yes, it was. Okay, thank you. Cause, yeah, because he played Michael Scott in the no, UK one. Well, I don't know if the character was also named Michael Scott. I just know that he played that character in the UK version. Yeah. Um, damn. ADHD Point. brain. Message at the yeah. end of the day, fuck Bobby Kotick. Yeah, yeah, eat Bobby Kotick, eat Jeff Bezos, eat, him. eat whoever the head of EA is. I I just wonder eat that I, I just wonder when, you know, uh the end of the world comes and the ashes are falling around them if they can keep themselves warm there for the, with their stacks of money. No, they'll be in they'll be in weird cryo tubes and oh. hoping for a better future. How shitty is that, though? In the middle of a pan, well, I know we're getting like s semi towards the telling, whatever. Um, but still, we're in the, we're in a pandemic. Are we still talking about you get, games? <laughs> you, you get fired, and then Bobby's like, "It's okay. Here's two hundred dollars to battle net. At least you can play games while you're starving to death. At least you can buy our loot boxes, right? Oh, Does loot God. boxes carry lunches for my children? No. Like not even. 
Like, I got a fucking $25, $20 <laughs> gift card to Stop and Shop for Christmas for my the, when I worked at the country club. And fuck those pieces of shit, because they tried to fucking pull a bunch of shit on me anyway when COVID happened. But that's another story for another time. Point is, is that, like, that at least is something I can use to feed myself. That's something that I can use. I would also get tips from people for, like, $100 here or $20 there, mm-hmm. depending on how nice a person the rich asshole was that being said sorry i'm very jaded after these last year two years of dealing with this shit almost green's a Um, good color though no it is a good color but that being said like two hundred dollars of store credit for the people that just fired you like yeah i don't think anybody who gets fired by that company or at least most people aren't gonna want to then go turn right back because what was it was a tweet that i saw that like think about it that way like in the same kind of tone as the one you had read before jose it's like think about it this way every one of those 200 dollars gift cards is just free money that they're not actually paying because it's just going right back into them anyway there's no mm-hmm. other place for it to be used even yeah. if one of them sold the 200 dollars gift card for cash that's still money going right back into activision's pocket eventually exactly mm-hmm. it's such a it's such a backhand to the face it's it's like the, and you know they know exactly what they're doing. They don't. They're not. They're not. To say that they're naive is naive in a, in and of itself. Um, they are just uh, absolute professional assholes, and they have no moral compass whatsoever. So. There's, there's, a, and I, if I may try to put a period on this discussion, um, mm-hmm. there is a bit from a little indie hit you might have heard of called BoJack Horseman. There's a oh, bit on that show yes. that where you know the main character one of the main characters is confronting an evil billionaire and is like we're gonna tell the world about what you've done and i'm sorry kind of spoilers but also like it just fits perfectly for this conversation it's like season three or four or something um tell the billionaire we're gonna release all the information of what you did he goes fine do it i don't care i'll still make a billion dollars tomorrow and by the way congress just passed a law making it legal for you to kill people if you have a billion dollars and like that sounds like a farcical <laughs> and it is a farce technically but when you think it when you hear about shit like this and it's like i mean you basically can though if you have enough money in the united states or in almost any country in the world sadly you can pretty much get away with anything including firing 200 well, firing however many of your fucking workers and then giving them a pittance Yep. Yeah. It, you, at some point, unfortunately, if you have a if you have a lot of money, you become untouchable. Also, that whole oh, we, we they have healthcare for a year thing. Yeah, I had Cobra for like two months, and it fucking sucked, and I had to change over to Medicaid because at least with the low income one, I'm actually able to go to the doctor now. But the mm. fucking Cobra, I was paying like more than I think my monthly rent for health insurance. I mean, it was crazy. Jeez. I just know it was it was huge. So, um, yeah, fuck Bobby Kotick and uh, watch BoJack Horseman. Mm-hmm. Watch let's Stupid talk- and Birdie when it comes back also. Let's, let's talk about some fun stuff. Um, Square Enix unveiled a slew of new announcements at the first Square Enix Presents digital showcase, including new project reveals and updates to existing titles. Uh, Luminous Productions game Project Athea has received a new name in the form of First Spoken with a release window of 2022. It also stars a black woman, apparently, so bonus points that there. Uh, it, Black- it looks incredibly good. Like yeah. I can't. It, like just just the movement it blows my mind every time someone posts those gifts on Twitter. And I'm like, but how does this work in game? Like, is it like a button prompt? Are you actually jumping like this? Like, it's it's, it's like crazy. It's, it's so, I feel like so. Like as a writer, I'm gonna bring this. I'm gonna bring. Hello, this Corey. <laughs> so as so as specifically as a as a fantasy sci fi writer. I feel like I've been waiting for this kind of game. Like my childhood self is like jumping in my ch- like literally wiggling in my chair because of how this game is a huge freaking deal. Because like we've gotten games that take place in fantastical worlds. We've gotten games that take place in real world with some magical properties. But we're this is this is one of those games that I think is a first <laughs> Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's kind of a first in the sense that we have a modern day protagonist from our world being thrust into this fantasy world. Literally, she's wearing tennis shoes. So, like, I don't know. I just from a from from a writer's perspective, it just seems extremely exciting because as a kid, I always dreamed of something like that happening to me. 
And I'm just like, one day when I turn 16 or when I turn 21 or when I turn 25, I'm just going to suddenly have powers. Corey, I, I dream about that every fucking morning Dude. in the shower. Now I'm, like, now I'm like, the day that I turn 30 is when I come into my powers. Here's my letter to Hogwarts. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. But yeah, no, I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah, uh, so I, I wanted to look this up and confirm this. Gary Witta, so the guy who wrote Rogue One and who wrote the final season of the Walking Dead game, he 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 made like the world lore. Nice, this, which excites the hell out of me because Rogue One is one of my awesome. favorite Star Wars movies. Wow, and, and Rogue One is literally one of the best. It's it is the best. An incredibly talented so writer, and like I can see, especially with the whole "that's a motherfucking dragon." Like that just seems like such a Gary <laughs> Whittle line to me. That yeah. I'm like, I'm like really hyped. I'm super hyped. That or like a dragon trailer. <laughs> Yeah, like, is that a fucking track? Like, gameplay footage can always be like, you know, you have to think about the text not representative of final whatever that always is somewhere in those videos. I didn't see that in that in that trailer. Oh. Well, either way, I'm just saying in general you have to kind of Well, no, I'm just I'm just saying now that you mentioned that, I didn't see that, mm-hmm. which is kind of nuts cuz is that actually what the game is looks like? But like even with that aside, like that one of my favorite things about it was hearing her say that. And I'm like, wow, that is like one of the most realistic things I've heard a Square Enix game character say in a while. Right? <laughs> right? Oh my lord. Um I so and then like of course they said that they couldn't show too much because they they would show more later. My 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 thought is they're probably gonna show more over the summer or they might show more like in the winter time when it gets closer to twenty twenty two. Um but uh with Forspoken, I'm it just there's so much I want to know, obviously, because it's like, okay, well, how is the game gonna play? We ser- we we clearly got like a little snippet of like her leaping and stuff and bounding like a like a jackrabbit. And using like the field. so many different types of mm, mm-hmm. magic, like not I'm just like one thing. Yeah. So it's just like, okay, oh, so clearly it's gonna be a fast paced game. But otherwise, I just like, what is it even going to like? Is it going to be a full blown RPG? Is it going to be completely open world? Like what's I, I just I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, Honestly, from, even from if what it's like a running simulator, I'd be happy. Like if it was I, just kind of like a I'm sorry, Sarah, you go on. You got more. To no, say. no, no, no. I mean, just from what I was seeing from what they showed, it looks like it's you have ways to go up and you have ways to go down and maybe to the side a little bit, but it looks like one of those games where it's not exactly like Devil May Cry 5 style com- combat. It doesn't rely heavily on combos. Almost like, and this is going to sound really weird, but bear with me, near Automata, because Automata wasn't really about combos, but it was still a fast-paced action game that had you using, like, not just swords, but using your pod to to use guns or like so in first spoken it's like oh you have your like fast pace attacks but you have different types of magic you can do like weird magical park parkour like it it almost looks like it's an action game but it's not like one of those like incredibly fast paced combo based action would you say like more presentation versus like as in depth is is like a devil may cry yeah one 100 percent I'm kind of on the, I'm kind of, now that Blaine said, uh, like, even if it was a running simulator or like a parkour simulator in a sense, I, I, I have a feeling it might be more that than anything. Like uh, it sort of, uh, Hell, Hellblade. Yeah. Hellblade like, so, was more of that cinematic feeling, but you still had like combat, you still had powers and you still right. had like puzzles to do, but it was ext- incredibly cinema, cinematic. Right. I think, I think the, the focus... Hardcore. Oh, okay. Um, I think the focus is probably, I mean, obviously it's still too early to tell. We don't know, but this is just speculation. Um, I think the focus could possibly be just on uh, adventure, exploration, and Mm -hmm. story progression, Mm -hmm. Um, which is rare with a lot of games these days because a lot of games tend to focus more on like i mean yeah there's story but they tend to focus more on like battle mechanics and like upgrading mechanics and all this stuff um so it's it'll be interesting if it ends up being something like that where it's literally just a purely graphically beautiful story-based game that's all about adventure it makes me think of um I don't remember what the name of it was, but the developers who made Hyperlight Drifter did 
the thing they released footage of like have a similar kind of vibe it was mostly um movement based what stupid jose <laughs> and his stupid puns i'm sorry blaine continue <laughs> well, I, all, all i said was like it wasn't the new game from the people that made hyper light drifter like doesn't that also seem to have like a similar vibe of, it um, does though yes. it does. and then also it kind of has a similar vibe to journey Mm -hmm. Which um, I never played, but I've heard is very good. It is very good. Um, and there was another one. The same people who made Journey made like a made like an ocean one or something like that. I can't remember what that one. Abzu. Called. Abzu. Thank you, Abzu. Um, I haven't uh -huh. played Abzu, but so it has kind of like that vibe. Um, I just hope. I just. I really, really hope that. If it's not more, if it is exactly what we're what we're thinking it's going to be, I really hope they don't hype it up more than it than it is, you know, supposed to be, because um, then that's just going to hurt the game. Uh, right. But if but if it is more than we think it's going to be, then please hype away, you know. Um, just to keep moving, does anyone here care about Black Panther coming to Avengers or the Tomb Raider tr trilogy? I thought that was pretty cool. I mean, it's cool. The, I'm totally tomb, down for it. The Tomb Raider trilogy, I might be interested in because I never played Rise of the Tomb Raider or Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Um, yeah, I so never beat Rise. I got like halfway through it. It might get me into the series again. And then um, I never really wanted to play Avengers uh, just because I heard a lot of bad things about the combat. And then hearing you play it, um, you said a lot. You had a lot of notes and you couldn't even finish it, apparently. Um, so I, though I thought it was cool that Black Panther was coming to the Avengers, um, eh, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, same. I think Black Panther looks cool. It doesn't make me want to get the Avengers though. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I think I might get into, I don't know if I'll talk about my experience with Avengers later, but yeah, basically I, my plan with it was to ignore <laughs> all the destiny like elements of it, like the, the end game grinding. I just wanted to play the campaign. And like the first five hours of it is basically just like a linear campaign. I'm like, yes, this is exactly what I want. This is beautiful. It's well paced. Love the narrative. And then just like even the missions you play later on are just just screams destiny like strikes. I'm just like, I don't want to do deal with this whatsoever. So I have no interest in Avengers. I know Mesa beat it. Um, the ghost of Mesa might have something to say about it later on, but we'll have to wait and see. <laughs> um, as far as Tomb Raider is concerned, um, the original, well, the original, the uh, 2013 reboot is probably still the best in that entire series. Um, just purely on like on a gameplay front, it's it's not exactly a Metroidvania, but it feels like it. Um, my cat is going fucking nuts right now. <laughs> <laughs> Aw, she wants Baby. she wants attention. She, she's been annoying all day. <laughs> um, Rise of the Tomb Raider is still pretty good. It has a lot of balancing issues in that you can just play with poison arrows the entire game, so you don't even have to like hit enemies. You can like hit from like five meters off and still kill them with like one hit. So it's oh, wow. very broken. Oh wow! And Shadow of the Tomb Raider definitely leans more into like the puzzle and story elements, but like the story is like such a rehash of Rise of the Tomb Raider that I don't care about on that front. And, and then there's like barely any gameplay in it, so. I think they've gone progressively worse. Other people have different uh, weird. outlooks on I, it, though. That, I, I guess it makes me a little bit feel better that I didn't play them because it it like it means I didn't really miss out on much. Um, I think the 2013 I, one's still really worth playing. I played I played the first one. The first one was fantastic. I think I think at the time I was still very much into like Uncharted, and I was like I like Tomb Raider, but I like Uncharted more, and it's not Uncharted, so. I'll play it eventually. <laughs> mm. the The 2013 game is, is uncharted. It is a uncharted focused on gameplay, and it's mm -hmm. it's it's pretty damn good. Yeah. No. Yeah. The first the the first Tomb Raider was fantastic. I enjoyed it. I didn't. Mm -hmm. I didn't super like the fact that her narrative with her her their quote unquote best friend felt really queer baity. Like it kept feeling like they were going to reveal mm. like there was her girlfriend or something, <laughs> but then they never did. But they yeah. kept hinting like how much she cares about this girl, but then it still never went anywhere. Uh, that was my that was my only complaint in that game. Everything else was great. <sighs> I mean, there's... nobody nobody is brave enough to just freaking make a main character of a series queer. I mean, there's freaking... also some weird stuff with like her friend was like somehow the chosen one, and it felt kind of weird given that she was like the only Asian person in the story. I'm like. Ah. <laughs> 
true. Yeah. Yeah. Chosen one. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm <laughs> now I'm thinking about it. Like the end of that game gets Shut, pretty fucking nuts. Uh, Shun the non the non believer. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> We're mixing references sorry, now. Sorry, We're mixing references. That was the only thing I thought of with that with that voice. I'm sorry. It's all good. <laughs> this is I, now a Charlie the Unicorn, Jason Steele fan he's, cast. Um, Jesus Christ! Thanks to foot style. How'd you like it? <laughs> Dude, they were they were so obsessed in that trilogy with just like you know it would be cool if we just like fucked up Laura Croft like she's just constantly bleeding and getting stabbed no, and just like real. punch her and holes. The death animations are like from what I've been told. Oh like, god, they games, creeped me out they so get, like, hard. Fucked up and exploitative after a time. Mm-hmm. You know, they they get less gory as the games go on. So like the the 2013 one is definitely the worst in that regard. Oh, yeah, okay. but it, it's pretty that's, bad. That's better than I, what I thought, I guess. I mean, I, I love like Saw movies, but even still, I was just like, oh, that's a bit much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, well. It was incredibly uncomfortable because I remember I, mean, I played have- Tomb Raider 2013 when I was really young. It was super uncomfortable and just I just Laura's like constant moaning was really weird. And, like yeah. I get you're hurt, but it's like well, it was just so weird. And it's like I like the new Tomb, Tomb Raider a lot. But it's just like it was so fucking weird. Like compare, I could tell compare that they're... to Nathan Drake, like wincing, looking like he has to take a shit as he falls over. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Nathan Drake's like, "Oh, haha, you shot me with a bullet. That's funny." Ha ha ha. But uh, yeah, it, it was reaffirmed th- through all that, and uh, at least in 2013, just like I do not want to get, I do not want to die in this game, and I really don't want to get shot or hurt in any regard because it, it's just weird. <laughs> um. Let's go to move on to some more interesting stuff. This is probably the most interesting thing to come out of the showcase for me. Uh, the next installment in the Life is Strange series, True Colors, is going to be releasing in September with uh, Alex Chen, a young Asian woman with the psychic power of empathy. Uh, one interesting tidbit about True Colors is that unlike the rest of the Life is Strange series, it's going to re- release as a complete game out of the gate instead of the typical ep- um, structured um, epi- episodic structure. I'm so excited. I hate waiting because I am an adult <laughs> who likes things right now. <laughs> as, yeah. as a bonus, uh, Life is Strange and Life is Strange Before the Storm are going to be bundled together with a remastered um are going to be i'm sorry they're going to be bundled in a remastered collection in september and they're going to be included in the ultimate edition of true colors it's uh that gives me another reason to replay uh life is strange and life is strange before the storm which both are fantastic games and have fantastic soundtracks um oh my god uh, the soundtracks are so good they're so good friendly reminder that uh daughter did the entire soundtrack for uh mm-hmm. before the storm and it's yep. so fucking Gosh, good that sound okay the soundtrack alone makes the story so much mm-hmm. more heartbreaking it's just oh god it damaged me can, <laughs> anyway continue continue or else we will can, be here forever Go. Can, can i posit one bad opinion and then put forth one very mm-hmm. good opinion sure yeah chloe sucks she's a bad friend He's a all shitty right, person. All right, all right, all right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I was gonna be quiet because <laughs> no, no, no. Right you shut up. I was gonna be quiet because <laughs> I don't even really give a crap about these games. Like, I mean, I'm, I think, I think it's cool what they're doing with the new one. Um, I have a little bit of reservations just on how they've handled like queerness in general in that series. I've never played the second one, so I don't know how they deal with it, but I know that there are queer characters. I know Tell Me Why was a major step forward because they actually handled a character being trans in that really, really well. Being played by a trans man, um, giving people like info of like what to expect from it, um, everything else. Not from what I know, like not centering it around like a trans sorrow story, but there are like things that happen to that character that that are realistic. Um I was never really a big once I learned the one of the ending choices in Life is Strange one basically forcing you to either have barrier queers or just have them never do a th- like or whatever like I I kind of lost interest in never playing the rest of that game that being said with this new thing coming out it makes just the announcement of the third one kind of makes me want to go back and maybe cuz I have it on PS4 cuz I got it for free once and I kind of want to go back and maybe play it, give it a shot, see if, you know, if despite my issues with one kind of tropey thing aspect of the ending being, like, if I could get over it with that, I want to play the second one, see what I see about that, um, and then hopefully if I play the third one, I enjoy it. 
Um, that being said, that being said, <laughs> Chloe is fucking great. How Thank fucking you, Blaine. You? I think she. I, no, I think she's I extremely well written. That girl. In that she, I mean, you can have a crush on someone that still sucks. Um, I will say I this much. I will say this much. Me, but I'm not gonna say anything. I, I will say this. Um. This is this has nothing to do with Chloe, but I, I was going to say that a lot of people are calling it Life is Strange three, but it didn't actually get the official title of three. Yeah, no, you're right. So I I'm not right. entirely sure it's a third installment, even though the whole world is works kind of like an anthology. Um, even Life is Strange three. I mean, I'm sorry. Um, tell me why it, it it operates within that same universe, like powers. It's it's yeah. Haven't they? But I'm not. I'm not so Life sure. Is strange is like a universe because it's people that have like supernatural powers. Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. So the thing about Tell Me Why is that it's actually not within the Life is Strange universe because they make reference to similar kind of IPs or movies or games or something, but they call it like life is weird or something there's like a poster on the wall yes, that says like, i know what weird. you're talking about I, there's like a reference to that there's a reference to vampire but it's not called yeah that. yeah Interesting. so it's I like yeah. off-brand references it's, so it's technically it's, a, it's an it's, actual achievement you can get for like finding mm -hmm. all 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 of them i think it's like a 40 point achievement do you remember that something. moment in the first game i think is, is like a poster or a dvd like one of the characters goes like wow final fantasy the movie yes, that movie was really good what we did was great <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, so i will i will argue that life is strange the ip is its own universe and then everything else that uh don't nod makes uh kind of and this is a pun gives nod to their other ips well i mean i think i i connected that tell me why i was in the same universe because of the like twin telepathy kind of psych like psychic powers that the twins had kind of fit in with what they've done in the past life is strange games uh -huh. so i kind of was like oh okay this is their psychic ability is their insane twin telepathy not the like like not the like oh they're twins they can like understand one another they can literally hear one another and talk to each other in their minds like that's right like, i mean that's i mean to be power. to be fair with life is strange one and two there's like nothing in common between the two there, there is one minor character i it, it's not it's not a spoiler i swear also, there's one minor character that pops up in life is strange two that was in life is strange one but it's well, not like this big there, connection it's not even it's it's not even that but there also is I don't think this is a spoiler. I'm not sure. I'm not going to say it, but it's like there's literally a direct reference to the first Life is Strange in Life is Strange 2. A very in your face direct reference. I will and just ask also, this does it involve the desert? There is yeah. there is a character in Life is Strange True True Colors who was a main character in Before the Storm and she's now a, a, one of the main characters in true in true colors yeah is, it, so, is this like, the don't nod the cinematic universe well because at yes. the beginning of life is strange 2 it literally asks you what was your final choice in life is strange 1 that's weird it, it doesn't read your save no the, uh, that's the, weird uh, it's, it's, not that weird. Your save. it's not that weird wolfenstein mm -hmm. the new colossus does the same thing yeah Instead of reading your save or whatever, it act. I guess because they want to account for the fact that maybe you didn't play it on the same console. Exactly. They, okay. um, they just ask you, okay, who did you save, Fergus or uh, Wyatt? Mm -hmm. Okay. All I know, the ending choice in Life is Strange 1, that was a very easy choice to make. That's all I'll say. I haven't even <laughs> done it, and I agree with you. Wait, no, I don't. No, I no, don't. No, <laughs> no, no, I don't. I mean, it is. Wait, hold on, hold on. I it's do agree point. with you, but not for the reasons that you're saying. In the complete opposite direction. I, I, I um, I, I, I agree with Blaine. What Blaine said. I think you have to morally agree with me, though. I, I, like, just, I am in the moral no. right there. Maybe for can a different just, reason, but I am morally correct. Go ahead, no, sir. Can I just pick up really, really fast? So the fact that they're dealing with um empathy as is the new like psychic power in this oh, life yeah, is strange yeah, yeah. as first of all as i am an empathic person i am an empath um so oh, just here mace has got my back huh mace is in the chat he has my back okay. so um so i one i've never heard it 
coined as a psychic power, which makes me feel a whole lot, a whole lot cooler. Uh, two, just having a game actually handle that because being an empath can be incredibly difficult. Uh, people dis- describe it as so many different feelings. For me, um, feeling others' emotion is a very intense pressure on me, depending on what the emotion is. If it's something like anger or sadness, I literally feel like I have a rock strap strapped to me. So it's the whole idea of being able to play a game that's covering someone who is an empath is super interesting to me because it's the whole idea of I tell my friends if they want to know what it's like being someone that has uh, multiple mental illnesses to play Hellblade. I can't wait to tell my friends like, oh, you know how sometimes I get this crushing feeling when I'm around people, when I'm in very large crowds, when it's just very hard for me to like, basically when I start like kind of zoning out because I'm just dealing with so many um, uh, like physical emotions hitting me at once i can't wait to go did you play life is life is strange the 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 new one that's how i feel i don't break windows when i get angry but it's the whole thing of like i can feel that when you're angry it also makes me angry but i try my best to exhume this like good energy this like happiness to hope that it helps you and i've and i actually had a couple friends reach out to me after they announced it and it's like, why does that sound scary to me? Being able to control others' emotions or being able to like impress your emotions onto onto others. So it was cool getting to explain to them. Yeah, it sounds scary, but at the same time, when you think about it, I use it to help people. I help people whenever I can. Yeah, it drains me, but I'm also exhuming that happiness and you exhuming know someone that else is having a bad day without ever yes. talking to them like, yes. across the country. <laughs> Thank you, Blaine. Exactly. I had bad days and then get a call from my text from my boyfriend that he's not feeling well. And I'm like, oh, that was it. Yeah, it's it, and being, it, being empathic and being an empath can be very difficult, but it also can be an incredibly <laughs> real, real rewarding experience. And I'm so happy that it's Don't Nod that is handling this because I think they can handle it very, very well and show it in in a way where they can show it as this insane psychic power, but also be like, hey, em- empaths exist, empathic people exist and we're going to show you the good and the bad side to this so that you can understand your friends or your family because because my mom is in a I'm, I'm empath she's a super empathic person and i got that from her it's sometimes it's bad but sometimes it can be incredibly rewarding and incredibly exciting and also now i know that i'm a psychic person and now i just feel like i can just go like cory are you sad today can I, can I, can I, can I help you? Trick question. When um, are you sad? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I completely agree with Sarah. Um, I, I also am empathic in some way, shape or form as well. Um, I don't know if I'm as empathic to, to the extent of Sarah, but, um, or maybe my empathy is different. Um, but, um, I, I also feel like when I'm near people, or even the people that I live with, like my roommates or ish, I compound uh, emotion inside of me, um, and it will it will compound and compound and compound over the span of like months, even. And then finally, I'll just break down and I'll you know start pacing across a room and just talk to ish and let it all out, or I'll cry or something like that. And then I realize how much of other people's emotions I've been holding inside me. Um, and when I saw the trailer of that game, I was like, that's like, that's so realistic. Mm -hmm. Like, Mm -hmm. I can't see auras, of course, but like, I mean, there's people that can, which is Mm -hmm. cool, but like, I literally can look or even sit next to a person and immediately I feel their energy. I feel what kind of emotion they have. Like, like I have a friend who um, literally there's times where she's just like before the pandemic, she was, she, there was times where she doesn't feel very huggy and, or even she doesn't even like to be touched. And I can feel that energy when she kind of goes inside of herself and she becomes kind of, you know, tightened. And then when I can feel when she actually is opened up and she's okay with me hugging her um, and expressing more touchy feeliness, I can feel that. And it's, 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 it's a, it's a weird feeling. It, it, it's a, uh, how would I even explain it? It's like, I'm, it's like a tightness in my chest. It, that's how I would explain it. Yeah. For, for me, I think it definitely manifests like, I don't want to say almost exclusively, but like, uh, it almost exclusively manifests in like 
crippling fucking anxiety. Like if I feel like if I accidentally pissed a friend off, like if I can feel that vibe from them, I get that as well. And then I it just like, oh, great. Now everyone in the world fucking hates me. This is going to ruin my entire <laughs> fucking day. So the one the one thing about empathic people, which I really hope that don't not touches on this. And it kind of sort of to me, it kind of looks like they are with, with with the fact that uh, Alex, correct? Alex Chen. Yes, Alex. The yeah. fact that that their emotions are so intense that they could actually like shatter glass, or they can like make people instantly either feel feel better or change their emotions on the fly. I think that's like kind of a supernatural way of showing that em- that empaths and empathic people can have different like. I don't want to say wavelengths because that's kind of dumb. They have like their own like place on the on the line of how empath how empathic they they are and how that shows it in themselves. And I think that's going to be really interesting for them to touch on in a Life is Strange game because I because like I've always said that next to Ninja Theory, Don't Nod's one of my favorite de- developers to to talk about this stuff and to show this stuff in a way where it's easier for a lot of people to understand it. So I, so I really hope that that's where they go with true, with true colors is that they show it in, in a way where they're like, Hey, while we have a very well intuned, very intense empath as, as our main character, know that the empathetic spectrum can like vary from person to person yeah it, how I they th- feel it might be different from someone else for me it, it might be that crushing pressure or that weight lifted off my shoulders mm-hmm. for Corey, it could be that tightness in your in your in your chest so mm-hmm. i that, that's what i hope that they do i have a feeling that they're going to yeah um, um so. it, it's it, it's I will say the the way that they are depicting it so far in the in the trailer seems pretty accurate because it's it literally very strange it, accurate like it's yeah, very no, like, yeah. like literally empathic people we like we're sponges that's literally what we are we're we're emotion and energy sponges for better um, or for worse <laughs> yeah for better or for worse that's what we are so it's like be happy damn it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But no you can't promises. Be happy all the time. I know. You wanna bet? <laughs> you wanna bet? <laughs> uh, take, but, take my happiness, damn it! <laughs> let's talk okay. about some okay. unadulterated <laughs> fucking joy. Um, okay, how does everyone Apple, feel? We should note really, really fast: the Life is Strange and Before the Storm remasters as of right now you can't get them in just the set you have to get the 79 dollar it's either 79 or it's 89 dollar ultimate ed- edition of true colors i think i plan on scoring that one anyway too so like Wait. as of right now hmm. <clears throat> you can't buy them by themselves you can only get not them as <laughs> as of right now there is not a steam page there is not a playstation network page there's not an xbox store page for the just the collection of Life is Strange one and Before the Storm by itself. Right. As of My right now, is, when did oh. Square Enix start taking tips from Activision? Because that's the same shit they pulled with Modern Warfare. I don't like Call of Duty, but as everyone who knows me on this podcast knows, but that's literally the same thing. Yeah, like that with like, oh, you can only get Call of Duty Modern Warfare remastered if you get the eighty dollar version of Infinite Warfare or whatever. Later, I they did make it viable. Yeah, I, I mean, I feel. Like I would hope that they would put it out. Infinite at some yeah, point. I feel like they're going to make it by themselves. As of right now, I think they're just saying, hey, if you get the Ultimate Edition, you get this with it. But there's I feel three, like there's three different out. versions, though, because there's the regular base game version, there's the um, Deluxe Edition, which comes with a bunch of extra stuff for True Colors, and then the Ultimate Edition just adds on the remaster and the, the both remasters. So if you just want to get True Colors and the extra stuff with it, you can get the Deluxe Edition, but if you do want the remaster at the time of as release, of right now, as of right now, you can get the ultimate edition. I mean, I feel yeah, like they're gonna put the. Money, st- I, guess. I feel I, I feel like they're gonna put the store page up s- eventually. I just feel like as of right now, to help sell pre-orders for the ultimate e- e- edition, they're just saying that now. No, yeah, it's, it's the whole. Hey, you want this cool thing? <clears throat> Better fucking pay eighty bucks for the other thing. Then you have. But like for people like me, because then then I will because I don't actually own the first game and the prequel. I actually um, 
I played them. Or wait, do I own Before the Storm? Scratch that. I do own Before the Storm, but I I don't own the original. <laughs> so this will be a chance to actually own everything, yeah. kind of in one place. And my criticism of capitalism aside, um, <laughs> no, I mean you basically have to just do the math of like how much is it for the original game. Let's just say the game is sixty bucks. If you're paying sixty bucks and then it's like twenty, thirty bucks extra. If that's about the price it would be anyway, then and you were gonna buy the one thing at launch anyway, then whatever. I'm just saying that I don't like when companies do this shit of like, oh, this is a thing with this other thing. Yeah. That's the mm-hmm. only way, mm-hmm. wink, wink, that you can get it because it just preys on people. <laughs> I mean, it could be worse. It, it could be disappearing wait. at the end of the month, like Mario. Yeah. yeah Ma- it yeah, could be right. like dying at the end of the month. Never John Renault is going to show up behind Mario with a fucking gun and just shoot him in the head at the end of the month. <laughs> Jesus. Oh my Christ. God. Someone, I need to someone, actually watch the professional. Sorry. I've only seen someone, a Someone's going to take. Mario behind the behind the shed and put him down. Jesus, <laughs> Luigi's gonna take Mario behind the mushroom pipe and just fucking throw a shell at his head. I, I, I think know. you mean gr- I think you mean green Mario. No, get out of here! So you're gonna you're I gonna see Luigi. just like a you're gonna see a blue explosion from the blue the blue shell. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a direct oh, hit. God. You don't yeah. even have to throw it. You just beat him over the head with we'll it. Let's go ahead and round out the uh, Square Enix presentation. Uh, who wants to talk Outriders? They I had do. a little. They had a little bit of a trailer I just kind of breaking down. <laughs> yeah, they, they had a trailer breaking down just some of the details, kind of breaking out like some of the classes. I missed um, most of that trailer, so I'll let you all handle the beginning. For, of the for whatever reason, I constantly for, forget, and maybe this is because like the name seems generic to me. I constantly forget this is uh, people. This is made by people can fly the same people that Fucking made Bullet Storm. Bullet they helped on Gears Storm. Judgment. Like and I have absolutely Judgment fucking so faith good in them. Too. Like the studio's solid. That's why I'm excited for this. Because this I, looks so cool. And yeah, you could say it's a Destiny clone, but also just from what they showed in that trailer, it it it, it looks like it has their brand of sarcasm in it, which is what excites the hell out uh, of me. Oh yeah, it, it definitely does. I I started because playing it, so it's- I have not played it because I just kind of figured, okay, since it's coming out on Game Pass, I'm going to wait. And just play it when it comes out unless which i don't know if someone can answer this does what you do in the demo yes transfer yes yes oh, hell yeah. okay start never mind it. i was gonna say you need to start playing it because it transfers over like i would like to over. play the trickster class so i can make people's bones explode that looks like the <laughs> oh, coolest damn that, thing that's ever the class that i chose on the demo from that what looks I rec- like the coolest damn thing ever. From what I recall, um, I don't remember who was telling me this, but they had like confirmed that this isn't like a live service game, like in the same vein as Destiny. Which I'm just like, oh, oh hell yeah, fuck Destiny. I'm Nexus good. brought it up in the chat, but I know someone else had I think had told both of us in the SDGC chat, but I don't remember who it was. Mm-hmm. I like uh, that. Was well, because well, because they instantly in that trailer, they like instantly start talking about post uh, post game content. Where they're I like, think- oh, once you beat the game, here's what you have to do afterwards. Not like, oh, we're we're gonna have you download this DLC. No, this is in the game from the get go. If it's more like border <laughs> of how Borderlands t- uh, tackles it, I'm totally down for that. Um, Sarah, if you I- want, I can download it on my PC because I started. I played it. I started it on my PlayStation Five just because I wanted to see it graphically how it looked. <laughs> but uh, if you want, I'll just literally start the same character again on i was most likely gonna play it on (laughs) xbox because i'm gonna get it on game pass that's fine i think as long if i'm playing on pc through xbox though through the xbox app should it not all of those games have cross play i would double check on that first there is a cross play there is a cross play setting but it's currently in beta for that game yeah i don't know if it'll be ready at launch then yeah yeah uh I'm excited for this game. I want to make your bones explode, and I say that the most threatening way possible, staring at the camera. I will make your bones ex- explode. I am all. F- I'm all for the pyromancer. That's my class, man. That's my class. Like, so, like, if you <laughs> told me, like, way back when, like, Bulletstorm came out, because I was hella into Bulletstorm. I was on the the high score list for the first level in Bulletstorm for a while because I, I was just I like, I more people. Honestly. I did into that people. recently and loved it. In the most like fun way possible. So it's like if you had told me that the people who had made Bulletstorm, who made this hilarious, like raunchy, gory as fuck action game, hilarious, was making a Destiny style that was sarcastic as Bulletstorm was, that's like, hey, we're gonna give it, we're gonna give you everything from the get. 
get go. There's going to be, this is not like a paid service game. You're going to have your end game content after, after you beat it. You're going to have all these other side, side stuff. I would be fucking, I would be down and I'm still down now. Like also fucking coming on game pass. Like, fuck yeah, that's $70 well, see, that's most, I don't need to spend. That's the most interesting thing about this whole thing to me is that like, when I first played the demo on PS4, I had a lot of mixed feelings because my thought process was like, okay, so the game starts. I know this is this group that made Bulletstorm. I don't feel like I the sarcasm, the like the 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 self-aware <laughs> humor. I feel more like there's this straightforward narrative going on that's very Mass Effecty, but also like oddly enough, like Alien Covenant. Um, the Ooh. whole like we gotta, we gotta go down. I know. So you got excited, and I'm just like, oh god. Um, <laughs> But, Does it turn like, out Michael Fassbender was behind everything the whole time? Yes. No, <laughs> no. Uh. Um, but no, so like it, it, it's a very standard kind of start of like, oh, we've got to colonize this planet and we had readings, but oh, the, there's one of the readings, the uh, uh, probes is missing and we got to find it. And then some stuff happens and then like everything goes to hell and you get frozen. I'm just summing up like the prologue for people. So it's not really spoilers. Yeah. Um, but like once you get out of the prologue and into the main game it still didn't feel like it, it was self-aware but it definitely felt like it was like okay now we can actually have fun and i was definitely like when i when like you were driving through the de- the murder canyon and seeing all the bodies and everything the murder and canyon that. you mean like, the world war one canyon <laughs> yes basically i was like okay yeah this is definitely looking glass studio i mean not yeah. looking glass um people can fly game this is definitely yeah. people can fly game and and until that point I was like playing it and shooting in the prologue and going like, oh my god, it's like so exaggerated, like their heads are exploding and everything else, like in every other <laughs> fucking people can fly game. People can fly game. Yeah, people just <laughs> like, explode when you shoot them. Was that when you shot <laughs> but, people's heads in bullets from numbers like two times the points flew out? But the you're one like, thing, oh, yeah. but the one thing that still had me like, I don't know, just this seems so confused was the whole thing that I was convinced this was a live service game because it just, it played like a live service game a looter shooter it um had all the makings of being a live service game i was expecting it to say like hey buy these packs and you'll use them when the game comes out and then i go in the sdgc discord and someone tells me like yeah no it's actually not a live service game and i'm like, what They're like yeah no that's the one thing that people can fly i've been like openly committed to con and over like saying over and over again is this is not a live service game this is a game you pay you pay you pay the money for you get content done no loot box no, i don't know if uh, no loot boxes but i just know like no none of the none of the weird things attached to it being they, a service product well they have a tier which is great that they have a tier system that you unlock you unlock more harder and harder difficulties if you want yeah. better loot. so that's it's like a diablo system it. almost it's crazy yeah it's like a diablo system which is so cool i was like i looked at that and i was like okay so they start you out in story mode obviously for the prologue and then you unlock easy mode and then that you go up from there yeah yeah. Which I think is the right way to handle that. Because oh, it, yeah. even if they're calling it story easy, which have some weird connotations of like, I know Sarah's talked about that before and I've mentioned it. Jose's mentioned it. We've all mentioned it, but like um, something I find it when you start on, when you say start with story and then easy and you show it, you're selling, you're telling people that's the intended difficulty. Now, if you want to make it harder, go for it. But right. they're not doing that weird, like, the intended difficulty is actually mm-hmm. medium. They're literally starting you at, no, like, this is the story intended difficulty. Mm-hmm. It sort of reminds me on what Destiny did. Like, in Destiny 1, when you beat a story level oh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. beat the game, you, like, unlock the ability to do past story missions, but they were harder. You exactly. unlocked it, you didn't have to do it. But if you're like, hey, you want to go back and play these story missions and we're throwing, like, harder enemies in there? Like, dude, go ahead. That's your mm-hmm. thing. We're here for you. And I feel like that because, again, I've not played the demo. I did actually just use my phone to download the demo onto my Xbox, though. <laughs> but, um, but the whole idea of, like, oh, this is the first story mission, and we're going to set you on easy right now, but if you want to change it, go ahead. We're not going to stop you. And especially if you're wonders, starting off on... Oh, sorry. Hmm. No, 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 go. Part of me wonders if, because you know how the Avengers, I know, uh, but we'll, this is a good way to segue to that too, Jose, because I know you said you might want to talk about it. Um, it. It reminds me of how, like, when you look, I I know Jim Sterling, they've mentioned this a lot, but I know other people have, where Avengers feels like a game that you can totally see this was supposed to be like an action game that got turned into a loot-style 
game as a service thing somewhere along the line in its development. Very oh, absolutely. Very fucking lootly. Yeah, that's that's what it looks like to me. This feels almost like the polar opposite of that. This feels like maybe it started as something like a like a games as a service money grub and like let's see what we can do out of this. And maybe either maybe at some point like I don't know. Maybe they saw what happened with Avengers and since it was too late to hit the brakes on that, they were like, let's hit the brakes on this. Maybe when people can fly got involved, they were like, okay, but we're not doing a game. Not that not that necessarily they would have control the control to say like fuck you Square Enix, but like I don't know. It feels almost like it started out as a as a games as a service, and then at some point in development, they were like, no, we're not doing games as a service. We're just doing a regular fucking video game. I I guess to elaborate, since I think I'm the only one that hasn't played the demo yet, I do have it installed on my PC. Just haven't touched it because I'm a fucking madman, and for whatever godforsaken fucking reason, Wait. I decided to to reinstall. World of Warcraft. Thank you, Sarah. Hell yeah! Welcome, Fucking welcome back to hell. Literally, yeah. <laughs> you playing that last night after we got off State of Decay. Welcome back yeah. to hell. Literally, that, that's uh, all they say. Really, but, uh, really just, quick. I actually have a question. Sorry for those who have played the demo. Is there character customization? Yeah. So uh, I don't. Yeah. Have- it's okay. Yeah, it, it's, like, it's like Mass Effect One people. character character customization. Yeah, it's, it's very basic. Can, expansive. I can play a female character and give her hair. Yes. You can That's have this, you, Sarah. You and I are going to have the same haircut because it's the same haircut. Hell we yeah! Our characters. That's um, okay. To go, you don't to have go, a lot of hair colors continue. though, which is sad. No. To go back to your uh, point, Blaine, um, what screams like th- that? This has like kind of like games as a service uh, tendency to. Is it like the mission structure? Is it the way they give it hands out loot? Like what? What about it feels like it? It's the fact that it, like I said, that it felt like so many different, like, already existing ideas combined into one. Like, there's a moment where your character kneels on the ground after touching a a quote-unquote alien substance and has flashes of visions and stuff. So I'm like, okay, that's just Mass Effect. There's you and your character walking around on the surface. (laughs) And, um, like, there's this black goo on a tree. And someone either touches it or gets near it and they inhale it. And then they all start, like, freaking out and throwing up. And it's like, that's Alien Covenant. Um, literally. Um, you have, like, the attitude of it seems very, like, the gameplay feels very Destiny, the loot aspect, the, but it's a third-person shooter. I was surprised, actually, when I realized this is a third-person shooter. I expected it to be a first-person shooter. Um, the way the characters talk is very serious, like, very serious, so I was just like, again, this feels like a Mass Effect or a, I don't know, something like that. Or, like, a Destiny 1, like, before they were learned to actually have fun with it. Um, so like all of these things just kind of like with the loot and everything else. And I, where I paused on the thing of like, now you're in the thing. So you have a few hours to play all this stuff. Like, I just was like, this feels just like, this feels like the next big games to service. Cause there's all these avenues for them to do games as a service things. There's different weapons. So you could totally like buy the best weapon or buy like boosters to like, I don't know if there's a level up system. Well, no, there is a level up system, but like, um, it, it's just weird. It's just weird. There's like, you know, you have your abilities that recharge, your ults, etc. Um, you have your talent trees. So it feels very like MMOE in that sense. Again, it, it I'm going in circles here, sorry. The, the the overall point is that all of those things combined just make me go, this has every little different avenue that could be exploited into like a games as a service model. So the fact that it's not is just like what the fuck. Okay. Uh one last question, I guess, before we move on. Uh, for, when you br- when you brought up the alien goo, you said alien covenant. Did you mean Prometheus? No, no there I mean was also covenant. goo and covenant. Kind of... I and I know the um those uh, jars, whatever you want to call them, are no, no, still no, an no. alien I think, covenant, I think, but it doesn't play as the predominant role. I think okay. Blaine is talking about the scene in Alien Covenant when they're stepping on the fauna and they breathe in the stuff from the that's from the, the spores. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm thinking of. I mean, I know it's not the same thing as the goo. The goo was in Prometheus, but both move- Covenant was a was a was a not sequel to Prometheus anyway. Because Ridley Scott didn't want to admit that he fucked up with the first. I'm sorry. I fucking. It's you know what? It's okay. <sighs> I know I Wait, have not... opinions. I say with an Alien Covenant poster in the background. Yo, I know I don't understand opinion. that. Me and Sarah have had a long ass conversation about how much we disagree about these two guys. Wait, wait just, just for clarity, <laughs> Blaine, are you saying that Prometheus is inferior to Alien Covenant? I'm saying that they're both trying to be remakes of Alien. Well, no. Prometheus was trying to be a prequel to Alien, but, like, didn't want to admit it until the very end, like, post credit scene where an alien xenomorph kind of thing just pops out of nowhere. And then everyone was like, Ridley Scott, you're an idiot. You told us this wasn't Alien, and we told you it 
Or, you know, there was that cave painting that had aliens on it. Yeah, I would chalk that up more. It's like a marketing thing. But the... But then, stop. But then, no. you have Alien Covenant that's like <laughs> pretending to not be a remake of Alien, but it is. It's just a remake Even of Alien. Even though it's another prequel that takes place closer in the time. I mean, it's a prequel of Alien trying to, it's, it's, a, it's a remake of Alien trying to pretend it's a prequel to Alien. I yes, mean, I will not, trick. I will not deny that opinion. Lightweight spoilers for Alien Covenant. Um, me and my friend, like the, the dumb recurring joke we had for like freaking months on end was, um, so Michael Fassbender, David, whatever, he goes throughout the entire universe. He seeds giant portions of the galaxy with fucking uh, alien eggs and fucking glue, goo, whatever. So we literally came out of the theater just like, damn, he Davided the entire universe. Fucking yeah. Fassbender is the reason for this entire franchise. It takes away all the mystery from the first movie. It's like, where did it come from? Where yeah. did it, uh, David oh, made it, it was Michael Fass. It was Michael Fass. I, also, I, old I'm sorry, since we brought this conversation, since Jose brought the focus to this, I'm now going to talk about this. Can I, we talk I, I, about just, the- I just want I just want to say real quick, at least uh-huh. Prometheus had a th- had a thematic point to it compared to Covenant. Prometheus was a few very good ideas that never yes. fucking went anywhere. So it's very frustrating. As a movie, it does not work. When you watch the expanded stuff, like the other movies, the commercials with David, the commercials with Wayland, um, the others. Which are very material, good, by the way. They have no right to be as good as they are. I agree 100%. The movie <laughs> itself does not become a better movie, but you can at least be like, I can kind of see what Ridley Scott maybe wanted to do. I can appreciate some things about it, but I still think overall, like, I can't say it's a good movie because it's just got so many fucking problems. Of, it has problems of interesting things that just go nowhere and weird choices that make no sense. Like, I've heard people say, oh, well, Guy Pierce being an old man makeup is fine because they had to do that because Guy Pierce was in the other supplemental material. I'm like, then don't have the supplemental material and just, or even just cast fucking, you could have cast Malcolm McDowell as old Guy cast Pierce. An old person. And it would have worked. It would have worked because they, because nobody fucking cares. It looks better than the weird old man makeup. But Mike, digress because you're distracting me, Jose. Um, <laughs> also, what was, yeah, sorry. You know, they killed you know, Dave, Dave, Dave Franco in like a mini film. I know. Alien Covenant. That no, was not really Dave Franco. Uh, James Franco. Dave Franco's James. still all right, I guess. James. Um, James Franco. But, yeah, they killed him in like a weird 15 minute YouTube short film. Well, no, 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 no. They they introduced his character in that short, and they killed him in the beginning of the movie. But you're not going to feel yeah, anything about the character you. unless you unless watch you the watch the 15 minute, minute short film. Um. But that being said, my overall point that I keep trying to come back to is we need to discuss the fact that. Alien Covenant might be have one of the greatest fucking things I've ever seen in all of cinema because it's just the biggest like I don't give a fuck I'm a filmmaker I'm gonna do what I want because I'm Ridley Scott moments so there's a fight between David and uh, what's his name the other David uh, other, other David, David. Yeah, yeah, he has a different David. name I forget but whatever yeah and he gets his face cut in that fight uh, the other guy so when 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 they cut away and then we see a robot show up with that scar on his face and it's like oh he won blah 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 and I'm just sitting there going like I called that a mile away oh, like the second so he got nice. that I'm cut there, I'm sitting there going well of course you would but listen I just sat there going like there's no way Ridley Scott is that fucking stupid I don't believe it <laughs> But he, he is. That stupid. <laughs> Ridley, He's like Scott, late 70s. Ridley Scott had the balls to have a character cut his own face in the exact same way another character was. I'm sorry. I got yelled at for being too loud. Ridley Scott had the fucking balls to have a character <laughs> robot cut his own face in the exact same way his weird robot brother had his face cut when no one else saw the fight just to trick the audience and no one else. Because I guess David is is a god being and knows that he's in a movie, so he's like, I gotta trick the audience <laughs> and cut my face. It it, it, it makes it, it it was it made it more obvious than if you had had him show up with no scar. Like that would have been that would have been like better, because at least would have been dramatic irony. We need to have you know what? Let's do a movie club podcast just randomly. Yeah. Let's just agree to sit down, watch it. We can even do it in Discord if we want. Live yes, commentary will. over one another, but I will. I will. Uh, I am so dedicated to this. I would love let to it. Do that. Let it be known that while I do think that these two films are my least favorite Alien films, there uh, Prometheus was the movie that got me into Alien to begin with. with wait, so you like the very? Wait, you like them less than Alien? Alien Three and no, Alien Four? Well, I yes, don't. I do. Listen, dude, it's a very long story, but Prometheus got me into Alien to begin with, so it holds a very dumb place in my heart. 
And when it comes to Alien Covenant, I just like to watch people get ripped apart by a xenomorph, and that's what I got in that movie, so I had a grand old time. <laughs> Alien Resurrection is a good movie, don't yeah. I? I will. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Welcome to this alien tangent brought on right. by Sarah. Ba- back to games. Fun. We got like we got like 30 minutes. Play um, Alien Isolation, please. There we go. I brought it back to games. Uh, Corey Blaine, do you do you want to talk about State of Decay? Yeah. Why sure. Not? Yeah. Why not? So just uh, randomly out of the blue yesterday, uh, Corey, Corey Blaine and I just booted up State of K2. I believe me and Corey were playing on PC. Blaine was on Xbox. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, we, I just I personally haven't played it in like forever. I just kind of randomly saw Blaine messing around with it. Um, but yeah, it's a fun open world survival game. And I had a significantly better time than basically every other time I played the game because the people I used to play with, they were incredibly slow to do stuff. They were kind of just general jackasses in general. Not not a great time to play it. But playing with Corey and Blaine, we're just like, we know what we're doing. We're just going house to house. We're going to kill these play carts. Good time. <laughs> when I played That's before, cool. it was just like, we're going to do like a play cart like maybe mm, every eight hours. I'm like, fuck, dude, this game is so fucking slow. That but, means uh, a lot to me, honestly, to hear that because, like, I used to be one of those jackasses when, like, I played games. Like, um, it's a very short story time. Like, I didn't realize what a prick I was when I played video games with people until I played Borderlands with my uh, friend Claudia and Left for Dead 2, my boyfriend. Um, they both kind of had a heart to heart with me. Like, listen, you can't fucking play games like this if you're going to be like this because you're just being a jerk. Like, it's not fun to play with you. I was, like, right. blowing things up and, like, randomly in Left for Dead 2. And like shooting my comrades, I was like just talking a lot of weird bullshit and like doing stupid shit in Borderlands too. Um, nobody wants to play with someone who just spends the entire time like fucking shit up. It's one thing if like you make a, have a goof happen or whatever, but like I, from what Jose was telling me, like his friends would literally like basically do whatever they could to just make shit as like frustrating as possible. Kind of uh, situation is a slight tangent from that. You brought up Left 4 Dead. See, like I have some friends like. They are very good friends of mine in real life, but man, do I not enjoy playing Left 4 Dead with them? I, I, because mm-hmm. one of them in particular is like the fucking worst when it comes to friendly fire. Like, yeah, like, okay, it's funny once in a while, like, or is a goof when, like, when you're intentionally fucking blowing up propane tanks or tossing Molotovs. I mean, I'm just like, okay, look, you're making it so, like, let's actively not have fun in this thing we're supposed no, to be having exactly. fun in. Mm-hmm. And that was and, the hard uh, lesson I had to learn because I was doing shit like that. And, uh, and say to K2, I, um, I'm not necessarily like, trying to throw these people in, but it's like like they're they're by definition shitty people. It's just like kind of gaming habits that don't necessarily coalesce well. <laughs> um, but yeah, like one of their strategies was let's let's grab a car, and cars are very fucking rare in Sega. Okay, you are very lucky to find one. You have to maintain it. So you have to use repair kits. You have to put fuel in them. Uh, their primary strategy was using the car as a primary weapon. So <laughs> nine times out of ten. All right, we never had a car because we would just kind of waste them and then we're having to jog all the way back to home base and it it's just not a fun time. I very appreciated the way that Corey and Blaine were were going about things. Yeah, I um I'm I'm like I said uh to you guys in um private chat is that uh I typically with State of Decay, um I am a slow player. Um so and I typically when I play multiplayer games, like I'm I'm not aggress I'm not aggressive um when i start out i'm not really aggressive or anything i just kind of play it safe or i you know typically play multiplayer games the same way i would play a single player game and i just kind of enjoy it for myself and i think uh adding friends is like it kind of enhances the experience and it makes things go faster than it would if i were playing it by myself and so when you guys or when i entered into the game with you um with you and blaine then it sort of it started going a lot faster than I was used to. And I was like, Oh my God, that's right. There's two extra people here and we can like get shit done like on the dime. And I'm like, okay, let's do it. Let's do this shit. Like I, like I get, I I get there's those people that like, they just want to F around in a game and they, and they want to explode things and not take a game seriously. But um, I feel like that's kind of something that people need to grow out of. Uh, cause that's like, that's like the, that's like the kind of what a kid does in Grand Theft Auto. You want a game like that? I was that, just go, about to bring that up. Go play Grand Theft Auto. Don't, there, there, don't like. There's so many times where I'd go over like room. a, yeah, I was, yeah, I was there's so many times I would, I would like go over a friend's house. We play Grand Theft Auto and 
I can like nine times out of ten, none of them had ever started a single goddamn mission in there. Like it's just like I don't know. Let's spawn a tank and just shoot it like random buildings in the neighborhood That's until what we, we did die. When I was a teenager. Mm-hmm. But I mean, yeah, it's not it's necessarily like, wrong. People can play the game how they want, but it doesn't necessarily no, make yeah, for a it, super fun experience when other people it, are trying to play the game. No, it's true. It's, it, I'm not to shit. I'm not trying to shit on people necessarily that want to play it that way. But it's it's frustrating when you're playing with when you are playing with other people um, who literally just want to bullshit around when you actually want to like experience the game and like do missions and like do the story and stuff like that. And, you know, actually build a community and survive the apocalypse Mm -hmm. together the way that it was intended to be played. Um, I feel like a lot of it even comes down to like, you know, we're all adults. We don't have as much time as we used to. Right. So I'm just like, I, I have like an hour or two. I can play this. Can we not spend 30 minutes uh, ogling over our inventory at the home base? Can we just like grab something and go? Yeah, exactly. Literally. Yeah. So it just, um, it's fun. I can't wait for state of decay three. Cause it looks beautiful. Um, and I just, I love me a good zombie survival game. We're getting a lot of good zombie games this year. I'm mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you that much because we're getting State of the K. We're getting Resident Evil Village. We're getting uh freaking b- uh, Back for Blood. Oh, I'm going to yeah, be all over Back I'm, for Blood. Yeah, that's Back the one I'm for looking Blood. Forward is... to. Turtle Rock being like, fuck you, Valve. If you're not going to let us make Left 4 Dead 3, we're just going to make our own IP that's basically the same game. But like exactly. I, exactly. I hope it has cross play, but I will. I'm probably going to be getting it on PC. Mm hmm. Go but um yeah say to k pretty good game by yourself really fucking fun game uh with a good group of friends oh yeah 100 percent. especially when you have like 10 bullets to your name and there's a juggernaut charging at you and me and Corey are just taking turns distracting hey, it so we can slice so we can slash you know at who, it you know who also has xbox game pass and should play with us sarah i <laughs> like survival games. I'm sorry. Even if I'm playing with friends, I have to worry about how much fucking water I drink on a daily basis. I don't want to worry about how much my character's got to drink. I mean, that's yeah. just that's just it, too much. It, it's well, not no, that in depth, survival to be stuff honest. Is switching out character, it, it's literally like if you have playing as a character for too long, they get sleepy or they get injured, and you have to switch them out. You have health or st- you have health that's and stamina. I need that's to it. worry about. Like, that's still something I need to worry about. When I play games, I, mean, I want to worry about my health and who I'm fighting, and, like, that's it. I think that's basically every game, though. It's just, it's not... Survival games are not my thing. They never will be. Um, when I first played Fallout 3 for, like, the first time, and someone's like, don't drink radiated water, I'm like, then what the fuck am I supposed to drink? Like, it's like, I'm sorry. Like, what do you... <laughs> I don't know if I... I don't you think I've ever... Get right away. I don't think I've ever drinking anything in a Fallout game. It's I just serious. like... I just, my I, character does not require H2O my, to survive. I just, I can't do... HP. Survival games give me too much anxiety when I'm already playing shit. I'm <laughs> just like, I don't want to have to worry about like what my character eats and what my character Sarah drinks. Sarah has to worry about fire. real life. To counter your you. point yeah. about... Sarah has to Sarah has to worry about the five million things you have to focus on while playing WoW. <laughs> yeah, um. thank you. And I about surviving. I need to survive. Blaine, why do you need H2O when you can just wait in place for 24 hours and regenerate your health? That's how real life works. Right. <laughs> um, do you want um, me to talk about Man of Madon, I guess? Yeah, go for it. Um, so me and my co-op partner, we beat Man of Madon, even though we had to beat the last two chapters five fucking times. That game has a dumb choice at the end where if you fuck up one thing someone gets shot and i'm sure you both know what i'm talking about that's always the case in the final chapter and it was so (laughs) annoying i did an accidental stabby stab yeah my partner accidentally (laughs) stabby stabbed me too but then i found out it wasn't an accident so we had to redo that scene again (laughs) and he went oh it's either kill me or kill or kill you and i'm like oh thanks well it is an accident unless i guess because the thing is like if you're paying attention to the story at that point oh he had already beaten it so he knew Oh my god! Because I see because yeah. I did that on one player, I like I I attacked the the zombie attacking me, but then like literally as the, after I saw what had really happened, I was like, God damn it! I should I I knew this because yeah. I just fucking paid I mean, attention to everything else going on. So like the one thing I will say is that at least the final two chapters are incredibly short. So if you fuck up, you can easily go back. 
and you can beat the game within like 15 20 minutes depending on There's like no going back yeah right the, so i mean man of dawn was fine i'm a big fan of of until dawn like a huge fan of of that game it's one of my favorite playstation 4 games um mm-hmm. i i'm also a big fan of the unintentional co-op that that game spawned the whole like having like six friends on a couch and just passing the controller back in back and forth when that wasn't what was intended was super cool um so i went into man of dawn originally with super high expect expectations because i loved until dawn i'm so glad that my co-op partner and you guys a couple of their friends dim them down a bit because i think i dim my expectation a bit too low because i actually enjoyed man man of dawn to an extent I feel like if I played it single player, I wouldn't have enjoyed it as much as I did. Because playing some playing these games in co-op when I'm seeing one thing and my partner's seeing something completely different is so cool because of that just amount of anxiety that it builds where it's like, don't fuck up because I can't see what you're doing. <laughs> like I can't see what you're doing, so I'm scared of mistakes going to happen. Or it's like, or it's like, oh well, what was that sound that I just heard? Oh no, I broke the cap because we were both dumb. Like it's I I love how it does that. But then a part of me is just like it man of a dawn was just okay i didn't care about any of the characters as much as i did about the until until dawn kids because one thing about until until dawn that it does very very well at least to me is you don't care about the kids going in by the end of it i, I cared for characters that i didn't think i was going to care for can, oh, I bring yeah. up, can i bring up one thing about man of a dawn I, there is one actor in there. Uh, I think his name's Sean Ashmore. He plays yeah. uh, what, Jack what's his name Joyce in, in Quantum in Quantum Break. What's his name? Uh, what's his character's name in Man Love Madonna? Conrad. Con- Conrad. Okay, so, yeah, so, the, Conrad. so I I I I love Sean Ashmore as an actor. I love everything he's in. Uh, hashtag Watch the movie Frozen, not the princess one. Please um, play Quantum Break. He rocks in that game too. But so you have this like incredibly talented actor in here and I'm loving his performance. He's playing a douchebag pretty well. It's it's, it's all good. He's um, kind of the, a lovable douche though. W- with the choices, kind of a lovable douche. With the choices I made in the game, I, I don't think this, this is much of a spoiler. He literally dipped out like in within like the first hour of the game and he did not mm-hmm. appear until like five seconds before the credits happened. I'm just like, okay, he was this incredibly then- talented actor. And he's not in the majority of the game. He and can if, be, but because of the you, choices I made, I'm just like, oh, that sucks. If you, if you end up doing that, there is an ending that you can get that just totally fucks it all up. And the, and the ending doesn't tell you that until it shows you the epilogue. And there is a cheap as fuck jump scare that almost made me piss myself that I was so angry at. Because the game doesn't tell you, and then the game's like, oh, guess what happened to this person? And you're like, wow, this ending isn't good. When you made it seem like the best ending. When you when you Hashtag said your partner stop um, jump scares. When you said your Please. partner picked a thing that killed you, and you said he did it on purpose, right? Well, so at that point we had already lost someone and we were planning on going through the game not losing anybody. But then we ended up losing someone in a scene that to me was kind of unfair. Like if you didn't look up a guide for this scene, I could see anyone getting fucked up because the Can scene you makes you think you have to do one to thing. It. Uh, it's when you have two characters and one of the pirates and the pirate kind of is going crazy and he has a gun. Oh, I, I got through that my first time. We, I, I, too, I, but I, got I felt through incredibly it lucky. <laughs> I got through it fine. It was my partner that picked an option that he thought was the right option. Boom, instantly got shot. There was no attempting to fix it. Nothing. And we ended up messing it up a few times because we were thinking, oh, if we just deny it, we'll be fine. Well, if you deny it, you still get shot. We ended up having to look up a guide on how to do it correctly because it was so vague. Because you do what you think is going to work. And it just doesn't work. And it's like, so are we meant to lose someone? No, you have to do it so specifically you need to pick the right choices or else you get shot. There's no Has- ifs, ands, or buts on it. Hashtag high five, Blaine. <laughs> it's yeah. just like, Wait. it's that. What I the, my main complaint, I'll just get to the point really fast because I'm going to talk about Little Hope a little bit because we just started that. Um, is that I didn't care about any of the characters enough to care about, oh, we, oh, everybody lived. Yay. It was like, oh, that's cool. Everybody lived. We got the achievement for everybody living it was just like i kind of don't care about these people (laughs) like and it's like i get it that it's a short anthology game so it's meant to be short but 
But Until Dawn added a lot of really awesome backstory that you could find, and this game just kind of like shoves it in, kind of. It's like, oh, we need to give this game a background anyway, let's just shove it into optional papers that you can pick up. And there's so many like horror movie tropes that, while you can argue that Until Dawn was also tropey, the way that they handled some of these tropes was like, why is this ship still on the water? Why does this thing still work? This doesn't make any sense. To, to the point where we were just talking over the game, like, how are they able to do this? Why are they well, doing until, like, well, Yeah, because like until dawn had the advantage of like I mean I'm not I actually will not spoil that game because if you haven't played it, um it is one of the best PS4 games. Um, it is so fucking go good. It it's um, it is it is the, the best story, slasher film of recent memory. No, literally. Um <laughs> it, it it Oh well actually I would say no, your next is really good, but aside from that, maybe um it might be the best slasher film of memory. Um but that being said, um, the way the story flows in Until Dawn, it like starts out very tropey, and then like the way it subverts quite a few of those tropes. Like I almost want to compare it to Cabin in the Woods, but it's not quite on that level of like absurdity. It's just on a very big level of like the writers are know what they're doing and are knowing how to work around it. Jose, why you keep smiling? No reason. You having fun? It's I just I just like to smile. I'm a happy boy. See what what Blaine just said is totally true, and that's why Man Man of Madon was so disappointing for me because I didn't feel like that was there at all. Like I felt like the the the, the like writing prowess that they did with Until Dawn was just gone. Yeah, it felt it felt <laughs> overall weaker. Like I, again, like because I, I I've said this before, it's not the quote unquote ending twist of Man of Madon that I have a problem with. It's me, the, the overall... Me, a lot of the yeah. narrative just felt very inconsequential. It didn't grip me. Yeah, and it's like... I mean, the one thing I will say is that the curator being used as like a story pushing... I don't want to say an object, but like a... I don't want to say creature either, because we don't know what the fuck he is. Just like, the curator being used to push these stories is an interesting concept. I just hope they don't weigh too heavily on it for like a last minute twist at the end of, uh, at the end of like House of House of Ashes or, or something. But so we did start L- Little Hope last, last night. I've been told by multiple people, if I didn't like Man, Man, Man of Madon, I'm going to love L- Little Hope. And I can already enjoy it because a lot of the quality of life Im- improvements that they made to it following Man of Madon, there's like more accessibility features. There is just the one problem that Man that Man of Madon had was you didn't know what were, what would push the story forward. So you would be looking at objects trying oh, to get yeah, the backstory, yeah. then your partner would just push the story forward. You're like, I was reading that. Like, yeah, it like, didn't tell until you. Even Dawn, like, you, you felt like you could at least parse up, like, what is progress and what's not, except for a few yeah. instances that felt kind of intentional, which is fine. Yeah. And also, Man like, of... it's, it's the weird thing. Replaying Man of Madon, I was supposed to go back and replay it. I, like, started it. I just couldn't. Bring yeah, I would it. say if you can Until download I've like three times. <laughs> if you can download the curator's cut, I would suggest doing that I, because that I actually did. adds just, okay. Eh. Okay. But so like what little hope does is when you're in a room or or like an area, like before you can move on, the little icon over items that you can pick up is different compared to the icon that moves the story forward, which oh, I good. love. It lets me know, hey, you can pick up these objects, you can look around this r- room, and then when you want to push the story forward, you go to this area and hit A. Because that A is different than the A for picking stuff up. Which I really appreciate as someone who actually wants to get the backstory to a Little Hope. I am legitimately far more interested for, in doing so. Also, also uh, Little Hope is... Uh, very much a kind of Silent Hilly experience. That is what it's I've better, been told from multiple a, people. It's a better Silent Hill game than the medium. That's yeah. what I've also heard. But it's like, to um, me, um, the one thing I will say, and I'll bring this up really, really quickly, is so my co-op partner has already played it. He has beaten it a couple times. I've never played it. So when we booted up the uh, co-op game, the really cool thing that happened, and Blaine wasn't in here, so I can tell Blaine this because it was really, really cool. So we booted up, and and the curator actually said something different. He flat out was like, oh, I see that there are two of you here. 
one of you, this is not your first time. I see that you keep That's coming cool. back trying to get a better out- outcome. Like he specifically pointed out the fact that my partner had played it multiple times. And then he goes, but I can see that one of you, you are new to this. So I'll just give you the, the, uh, the uh, rundown. And then he also brought up the fact that, oh, I see that one of you maybe didn't get the outcome that you didn't want when, when, when you gave it a shot maybe try to work together with your with your with your partner to get the outcome that you truly want so it's just these cool like little things added in there to show that we, that i was playing with another person and to show that, that person had beaten the game multiple times and like also point out that in one of the playthroughs they had lost people so oh maybe try to work together to not lose people for, like it was like it was so cool for what it's worth um so when me and Corey played when we streamed it i guess i was considered the player one or whatever and Corey yeah. was player two it's worth doing both because there Corey had control of characters at certain times that i didn't have control for we yeah. were completely different locations so he was exploring places i had never been he's looking at notes like he kind of communicated to me like just you know via discord uh voice chat just kind of what he was seeing but it might be worth going through a second time as the other uh you know player one player two whatever just to kind of see that I mean, we'll try. I know we're talking about co-oping Outriders when that comes out, but we're definitely doing House of House of Ashes when that comes out because I'm slowly starting to like these games a bit more. And with House of Ashes looking like something mixed with the cave and the descent, I feel like I'm gonna fucking love the shit out of that one. And I know what the descent is. What's the cave? Um, I, apparently the cave has kind of the same premise of the descent a little bit. I've never seen it, but, but my co-op partner has. It's sort of like a weirder version of the descent, where instead of it just being like creatures in the cave that were like mutated creatures, the cave kind of has to deal with with this cave that has this like me that has this like bacteria or like thing in it that forces people to like change and it becomes a host of this thing i don't know i damn that sounds cool totally wrong, but like that's that's the like that's the vibes that we were getting from the from the house of ashes trailer mm-hmm. and i've been wanting them to stop doing the ghouls and ghosts stuff and go instantly into like creatures again yeah. So I'm really hoping that that's what House of Ashes is because then I will be 100% here for it. And we also think that we might have found a little hint that there may be a fourth game coming that they haven't announced yet. Which yeah, you I should hope talk about that, Sarah. Is. You should talk about uh, that. Huh? Like now? You should talk about that hint. Yeah, just, well, it's a quick thing. Oh, so so at the beginning of of uh, of Little Hope, the uh, curator goes to take a book off the shelf which says little little hope on it he he like basically runs this li- li- library of like stories about death and he takes the little hope book off the shelf and on the shelf you see four four books all have different s- symbols on them one of them has the house of ashes uh no one of them has the house of ashes i think it's a half moon on it one of them has a man of Madon, uh, like a nautical symbol on it. And the Little Hope book has a little wicker f- figure on it. Well, there was a fourth book on there. And for those who don't know, Man of Madon was announced first. Then Little Hope and House of Ashes w- w- was announced at basically the same time. They haven't announced a fourth game. <laughs> but there was four books on the shelf. And we actually had to pause the game because I literally talked to my partner. I'm like, did you see a fourth book? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, had had they announced a fourth game? He was like, no. So we're like 99% sure that House of Ashes is going to end with a surprise re- reveal trailer for a fourth Dark Pictures game that they haven't an- announced, which would be really fucking cool. <laughs> what if it, they're announcing that they're working on a Silent Hill game? I would lose my ever-loving I- shit. <laughs> That would be the one thing that would make me go, yeah, fine, give me a Silent Hill game. Because well, I, I mean, I already don't want one, but that. Would I mean, really, really fast. The rumor is that the Dark Pictures anthology started as a Silent Hill and anthology that uh, Konami said no to. Which, looking back on the story of Man of and looking at Little Hope, I can believe. I think I can believe. Yeah. I can see it for Little Hope, maybe not Man of Dawn. That's well, I that's that is like a tangent. The same rumor that happens every single time a new horror game comes out. Like, yeah. I mean, there are like, 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 not Sanitarium. That's a really good adventure game. 
Dementium the Ward, like that was a true story. Like that was literally they pitched a sound the whole game and it didn't go anywhere. But like now I feel like every time there's a new horror game come out, I hear someone be like, Oh, did you know that this I think this one seems li- like the rumor has it that this was like a Silent Hill game, but never got made into. It. I mean, I'm just I'm just gonna end me talking about like, yeah, I'm excited to play Little Little Hope. I'm excited for House of Ashes more. I am gonna be doing a blog post slash essay on how I think Supermassive has been handling the horror genre in video games. Um, it's gonna be big. Like this shit's gonna be wide. <laughs> like I'm pretty much gonna dive deep into like the genre of horror in both film and games and how Supermassive handled until until dawn and how they're handling this dark pictures anthology thing. Um, but I'm work- currently working on the notes for that because I'm not gonna start that till I beat Little Hope. So please look forward to it because I'm really excited to write about it as someone who studied horror in college. So I'm very I'm excited to, to it. very excited to dis- to discuss this. But also the out the Outriders demo finished downloading. So nice. We'll we'll get there. <laughs> um, we have about five minutes, so I won't necessarily dive super deep in anything. I um I don't want to get into my doom uh, eternal the ancient gods dlc notes because i made a lot of them and i know i've been lagging on churning out that video version why did i see why did i see a shirtless maybe naked doom guy in your twitch video on it what aren't you telling me wait what (laughs) baby naked what i saw like a uh it, it was like a replay of your twitch stream of it and there was a doom guy who was shirtless maybe Naked, oh yeah, that that that's a long story. Build the tea. Tell me, I just made pictures. <laughs> yeah, what? I'll, I'll talk to you about it after. <laughs> I, I, I have some. I sent Jose some piece of surprise news that uh, I wanted to briefly bring up, but um, it is confirmed that a uh, Bioshock Four is being worked on. Oh, that's been known <laughs> forever. Oh, good. <laughs> that's been known forever. We like, love that's you, Corey, been, but uh, we that's hate been you. not so held secret in the gaming industry. For yes, us. exactly. Not so, but it's been They've gone to yeah. go on. Sorry, uh, no. It's I was just gonna say like now it's even more confirmed. <laughs> um, but but yeah. So I, I won't get into my Doom Eternal notes aside from this is going to sound really weird because you know I think burnout like on any kind of hobbies is pretty natural. And the DLC was only like two and a half hours. Like I streamed the entire thing in one sitting. But damn, is that like the most like ecstatic I was to be like, yeah, I I actually really fucking love this medium. And it was kind of very refreshing to have that after just kind of like maybe churning through some stuff. I'm just like, I don't know. It's something to do. It's part of the hobby versus being super ecstatic. Um, But yeah, won't won't jump down into my essay notes, which I'm probably just going to have to toss into that video essay I've been putting off. Mm-hmm. um and then yeah i won't talk about any of the other games uh still playing tell me why it is probably one of my favorite video game stories of all time if not just stories in general um and great trans representation although i think it's taking a turn i think kind of dilutes the point a little bit but that's all I'll say for now because i haven't beaten mm-hmm. it uh currently i beat um last week i beat uh at dead of night which is a really spooky horror game but also mixed with fi- the film medium so it's like a f- it's like a film and a video game in one and it's fantastic and it's spooky and i think uh if you guys if you guys like um like supernatural horror games mixed with uh a crazy killer trying to bonk you with a with a cricket bat um, in a hotel, then go go ahead and play that game. <laughs> um, also, I beat uh, a smaller game called Murder House, which is like a retro style game in the style of like an old PS1 horror game. Um, and like it was very reminiscent of like Haunting Grounds and like the fir- and like Silent Hill Three a little bit because the prologue you start out in a mall. And it's like it 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 was really spooky, but like also really kind of campy. And I kind of I, I kind of loved it. <laughs> is, is that by that like Puppet Master Studios, whatever that group's called? I believe so. Yes. I just, I just do... loved... here. I'm gonna no. get a link. I'm gonna get a link for Go it because on. yeah, that developer. It's like one guy from remember correctly. Yeah. Who just makes a game like every year. Um, right. It's called like he, he calls himself like Puppet sale, Master right Studios or or, or Puppet something. Combo, I believe is his name. Puppet Combo. That's uh-huh. it. Hold on. While you look that up, Blaine, to... um, I think we got to get go ahead and get wrapping up pretty soon. Does anyone have any 
final statements or anything? Falcon and Winter and Winter Soldier is really good. It is. <laughs> yes. It is. Oh, I'm, I'm so excited for more. Oh. Give me my boy. I Give finished me my the Mandalorian boy. season two. I really want season three. Yep. I really want it. I still have to finish that. Thank you for reminding me. It's good shit. Uh, Ghost of Mesa, do you have anything to say? Ghost of Mesa. Ghost of Mesa has nothing to say. I wish Mesa's <laughs> ghost could have actually come on. Yeah, me too. We love that you, Ghost requires, of Mesa. That requires that person to be dead. Unless he can astral project himself. I mean, Danny <laughs> Phantom's a ghost. <laughs> you don't have to be dead to be a, to be Danny Phantom. Oh my um, God. for anyone who wants, so I put the link to Puppet Combos. Com- he's selling, I think, almost every game he's released so far for eleven something, and you can tip a little bit extra. I just picked oh, it up earlier today, and I that's fantastic. Everything I could. Um, I guess before we go ahead and put our socials out and whatnot, I want to give a very big shout out to um my patrons for supporting me on Patreon. Um, uh, to Robin Nomad and my buddy Sly. Uh, but one other big thanks I want to give this week is specifically to Blaine, because I don't know if I've Whoa. ever, I, I think we've acknowledged it, but I, I, I want to put it on blast now. I enjoy the level of discourse we can have, and it's all in good fun. And I think oh, yeah. you bring up a lot of valid points, and I love talking about stuff. I appreciate the fact that as heated as I do get, you don't do that shitty thing of like, okay, but no, ha ha. No, like you kind of let me have my time to speak about especially especially when it's something like uh, i mean how like when you first had me on here specifically to talk about the trans representation in last of us part two and my issues with that we love you blaine yeah we love you also everything he said to me to you too like <laughs> uh, uh, we are a very we are a very diverse cast of people including a ghost Including a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of my friends actually asked me, just like, "What?" Well, they point out, like, "Yeah, the the podcast is diverse." I'm just like, "I did not plan for that." I literally sent out some <laughs> Facebook messages, just like, "Hey, you're my friend. You want to do this?" And I just kept kind of showing up. So I love how, like, I still love how you've let me be like the non-committal, technically a member of the crew, but not completely a member of the crew. <laughs> it's a special spot. Exactly. almost as special as being a ghost <laughs> um i guess before we sign off uh everyone want to give their social sarah you want to go and start uh at sarah of mars on twitter uh my blog is out here in this open space but that blog is has been quiet for right now until i start this super massive piece uh you could read my uh top five movies that would make great games on a mm, movie phone still um i don't know i i scream into the ether and i hope that people hear i think they hear (laughs) i hope that people hear (laughs) uh cory um you can find me pretty much uh everywhere on instagram uh twitter twitch especially because i stream three days a week monday and tuesday 6 p.m pacific standard time and fridays at 7 p.m pacific standard time under the name king cory bear awesome and blaine uh, you can find me just search blaine uh, quote god killer unquote anderson on twitter i'm gonna be changing the app pretty soon i'm just trying to think of something that is gonna stick that isn't taken and I don't have to tell people, oh, this is a weird spelling to do it because of Twitter's character limitations. Mm-hmm. All right. And you can find me basically every single place on the Internet at the Seth Urkage because no one else has ever used that name in the history of the Internet, <laughs> uh, which is pretty convenient. Not going to lie. I was also uh, very happy that nobody snagged my name. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, Game Session Podcast is filmed live here at 6.30 p.m. PST on Sundays. You can find it later on podcast services as well as on YouTube as full episodes and in individually cut up segments. I stream here on Twitch kind of whenever-ish, about, uh, usually about 6 p.m. Um, best place to keep up to date with me like when I'm planning to stream and whatnot is on Twitter. Um, but next game I'm probably going to be playing, going to probably take a break from Resident Evil 6. We're going to to dive into the specifically the xbox game pass pc version of the evil within 
because uh, that is a different uh, version yeah, than what's uh, available yeah. on Steam. Has has some fixes, has some added modes, such as like first person. Uh, I don't know how much I'm going to use that. Maybe mess around with it, but yeah, should be a fun time. I'm probably going to shoot for um, probably Tuesday to stream that. But yeah, that's about it. Thanks for hanging out, everyone. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.